Welcome to the MC Universe. We're the Lorehounds, your guides to the multiverse and beyond. I'm David. I'm Alicia. And I'm John. And we're here to guide you through the tale of the God of Stories. We'll be recapping and breaking down the Loki season two finale and maybe series finale, wrapping our head around what just happened and what it all means. And then in Comics Corner, Jean's going to fill us in on some important Marvel comic tie-ins that are going to help us understand the story. Even as Loki wraps up, we are still covering everything MCU, and we'd love to get your feedback. Any Loki feedback that comes in, we will carry over to our next MCU podcast. Email all your feedback to mcu at thelawhounds.com or head over to our website and use the contact form or the voicemail feature. We also have a fun and active Discord community and invite you to join us there. Links in the show notes. For ad-free versions of this and all of our podcasts, check us out at patreon.com slash the lorehounds. I'll share more about our Patreon as well as notes for our upcoming programming schedule at the end of the podcast. Also, we'd be forever grateful if you could help us get more ears tuned into the Lorehounds MC Universe. If you can just leave a five-star rating and review wherever you're listening. It really helps more people find our podcast, and we read and appreciate every review. Before we get started, just a quick spoiler warning. We'll, of course, be spoiling all of the series Loki, up to and including the finale. But spoilers from the rest of the MCU and the Marvel Comics are also on the table. Jean, Alicia, we are burdened with great responsibility or... Um. I feel like there's another G word you could use there. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, we've got two like competing uh, MCU things, right? Great resp- mm-hmm. uh, r- responsibility and purpose. And really quick, Alicia, can you hit us up with episode details? This episode is titled Glorious Purpose, which is the same, obviously, as the pr- pilot. The first episode of this entire series was also titled Glorious Purpose. And it's seen out by our, you know, head trio of the season, uh, the directors, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead and the writer, Eric Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. You might have noticed that I've just turned off the fasten seatbelt sign. And as we bring the season in for our landing, I'd like to invite all of you to get up and freely move about the cabin, maybe even dance in the aisleways, if you'd like. <laughs> From all of us here at Lorehounds Airlines and the MC Universe show, we hope you have enjoyed this season of television. <laughs> <laughs> they landed. They landed the plane. Landed Woo, the plane. We made it. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, I I know not everyone's equally loves the bittersweet ending, but it was a work of art in any case because it certainly has everyone discussing. Yes, it was gorgeous. I, I I'm just so glad that something came together and we got a win. And then, of course, with Marvels, uh, sounds like the a lot of folks are enjoying that. So it just feels good. Jean, how you feeling? What are your thoughts on the episode? What's your takes? Um, you know. For the last month, I've been saying, <laughs> and each at the beginning of each podcast, <laughs> say it one more time, one more I've been time. Saying at the beginning of each podcast, <laughs> I don't want to say that this was my favorite episode, but here I am again. Here you are, Lord. This was my favorite. Episode. Amazing. That, that's yeah, just amazing. The proper word for it, just really yeah. amazing. I can't wait to dive into it, but um, really great storytelling. Just. This was just awesome, 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 awesome TV. Awesome. Anything particular that uh, jumps out or do you want to save it for? We'll talk about it. We'll talk about all of it. All right. All right. Yeah. Good. Alicia, where are you at? Yeah, I mean, I, was, I wrote down in the notes, my feelings are Legion, which is an, <laughs> which nice. is an excellent Marvel show that all of you yeah. should watch. <laughs> so just a plug for that. <laughs> I am actually glad. I call this on Twitter the Barbenheimer of the uh, MC universe. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Loki and the Marvels came out on the same day. But I am glad, personally, I didn't watch them on the same day because they both left me with a lot to think about. And you mm. know, definitely Loki was the meal and the Marvels was the delicious dessert, you know? Mm-hmm. Just a preview of my feelings about that movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just a quick uh, heads up. We are uh, all going to see that and probably yeah. get a podcast out towards the end of um, this week, if not early next week. We just got to get 
life schedules lined up and everybody get to the theater. But yeah, we're fully intending to do a full recap on it. No, I mean, I I just like I said, I think this is a work of art and I fully expect that we will see all the other all these characters again. I do hope that Tom Hiddleston is messing with us with this whole um, his appearance on The Tonight Show where he said it was a conclusion of 14 years. But he also said, I can time slip. I don't know that others can time slip, which makes me think, yeah, different Loki variants. You know, he's talking about it. Maybe kid Loki is coming back, but Mm -hmm. at least, I mean, I have to assume that we get this version of Loki at least appearing at some point in like the Avengers movies. I, and I need more of Sylvie because she was backgrounded more than I would like. And I want Mm -hmm. her to come back for more. And what about you, David? What did you think? Oh, so many feelings. I was left really in a befuddled state after I watched it the first time. I uh, listened to some podcasts, read some stuff, watched it again before we got on the mics today. There was just so many vibes and so many feelings uh, about this episode and about the series and about Marvel in general. So it was all mixed up and it was really hard to try to Hmm. you know, process everything, but I'm feeling really good about it now. Uh, you know, the, the visuals, the music, oh my God, the music in this episode yeah, was just oh yeah. incredible. It just did so much to give me the emotional punch that, you know, I, um, that we got from this episode. Shout out to Natalie Holt again. Yeah. Totally. So many, uh, the big vibes, like on a vibe check, the two things I really got were Edge of Tomorrow and Bran. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like those were Bran two things that I had. Thrones? Yeah, exactly. Okay. You know, with the tree, right? Mm-hmm, and, you know, mm-hmm. being at the center of, of things. Right. Yeah, good call. Um, I really do largely hope that this is a primary end for the Loki character. I don't necessarily want or need him back in future stuff if there's some references or some sort of little drive you know a little something it's fine but i'm just really satisfied with this ending and i don't want oh well we can bring him back and it'll be fine and uh, then you know then we get into that whole world of everything means nothing you know if everything is there then what does it all really mean and i just i love the bittersweet thought that going into any future projects you know seeing Mm -hmm. tom sitting on the throne there with that wry (laughs) smile with a little bit of a tear in his eye, thinking about his friends holding all the time strings together, you know, for all of eternity. I don't know. I I really like that. And I don't want to, I don't want that to be spoiled is what I'm saying. I, you know, whether they bring him back structurally or not, I, I just don't want to lose this, this, uh, this feeling that, you know, Loki's out there holding it all together for us. So uh, a lot of interesting things in this series too, in the season, little theories and things that we had that didn't pay off. You know, Obi wasn't evil. <laughs> the book is the <laughs> book. The banana in Yet. the back tube. <laughs> <laughs> no Val, at least, you know, in this. So I, I, I like that they're, you know, they were just fun little things. And mm-hmm. the main story is what took center stage. And I, and I really appreciated that. Yeah, uh, and uh, again, all the little details. There were subtle things like when Loki is doing the demonstration of the launcher in one of the you know montages. Even as he moves the little uh, expander thing from the launcher, there's a background sound of the fireworks shooting off, going, right. mm-hmm. you know, or the back of the suit when Victor Timely's in it when he's not connected to the big tube thing. There's like a fan blade closure thing yeah. around it, right? Yeah. Uh, in the control room, I never noticed this before, but somewhere in the middle of the control room, the colors invert on the upper. It's, it's hard to explain, but it, it's like it's one color of green above and a lighter color of green below, and then it hits a line, and then those two colors flip-flop, so the darker is below and the lighter is above. Just, just beautiful stuff. Uh, yeah. I, I cannot fault the show. It's the show... I, for v- folks who've listened to me before and you know been on been around with the lore hunts for a little bit you know it, folks know that I've got this idiosyncratic um ranking system for end of year shows and I I 
have a, a sort of a, a prestige class and then things that are entertaining and, and whatnot. And I, this show, I think, is going to fall into that prestige, to so that S tier, mm, mm-hmm. uh, which automatically puts things in, into my top 10 zone. Right. If I don't have enough S tier shows, then it sort of drops down to the next level. But this is definitely, I don't know where it's going to rank yet, but it's definitely going into that, that top tier, that top echelon for me for shows of the year. So, and I just love that they started out and they told us exactly what was going to happen that, you know, Loki's burdened with glorious purpose and that he's right. born to be a king. Mm-hmm. They telegraphed it the entire series. Yeah. That's what this was about. And they delivered. They 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 landed it and it's it's amazing. More than and a series. If this even. is the end of Jonathan Majors, then it came to What a way uh, to go out. It's a perfect it was fine. Like it wasn't just sort of cut in the middle. It was it was nicely, nicely handled from that regard. So I'm pretty excited about this overall, and it's just so pleasurable to have MCU have a win and for us to have a win in all of that too. So yeah, totally agree. <sighs> totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all wound up. All right. So before we get into the episode proper, Alicia, you've got some notes for us about some general MCU related news, mm-hmm. some strike stuff and some Loki stuff. So let's, uh, why don't you take us through all that? Just updating on the MCU drama as it unfolds. So we we talked previously about the Variety article and uh, Jean, you shared with us this Forbes article that was computing yes. point yes. by point uh, going down to financials with that. So it was, yeah, it was a direct rebuttal, um, not a perfect article in, in, in of no. itself, but it calls out like the media hyperbole in general and uh, yeah, go see the numbers. Go see the numbers and don't take all the naysayers and the sky is falling type mm-hmm. of critiques of the MCU at face value. In the Marvels is obviously drawing the kind of mixed reviews you would expect. We'll talk about that more when we break that down. Um, but in positive news, uh, yeah, and just for the record, as I already said, I loved it. I found it delightful. And uh, the people who have come after me on it have been the types you would expect. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard from what I'm seeing, Marvels is people are, are really happy. They're entertained. Yeah. They're walking out chuffed. They're, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be. No, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be Citizen Kane. Right. Right. It doesn't have to be heavy and, and big. Mm-hmm. We want entertainment. We want to have an enjoyable time if we go out to the theater. So, yeah. I, I, you know, somebody, I, I watched a, a snippet of a review where they said they they had fun, but they don't like the movie. What does that even mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had fun watching the movie, but I didn't like this movie. What huh? was that? What, like, what, what do you, you want from a you, movie? Yeah, right? right. You had fun watching the movie. Yeah. <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> you know, how it it just boggles the and mind. It's not. It's not that, like it's completely superficial. It, but it's not trying to be. You know, it's it it does move the MCU plot forward. Forward, in yes. And which is what a lot of people just, wanted, right? Right, exactly. And it's it's a fun film. Um, and it's I, I think yeah, we'll talk about it. But there are some deeper themes at play. It's just not, you know, a, a serious contemplation of emotions like Loki. <laughs> Right. right. <laughs> what else we got? We got yeah. uh, some news um, about Blade. Yeah. So, but yeah. So, Blade is confirmed rated R, which we'd already yes. said it Woo-hoo! was, but just Yay. more confirmation. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just I'm excited about the future of the MCU. Uh, we also got um, the next big movie project that we have coming up is Deadpool three, and okay. the cameo rumors are going crazy. And we got I posted this on the Discord. Uh, a personal favorite of mine, we got Dogpool confirmed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so go to the Discord if you want to see what Dogpool looks like. But <laughs> Ryan Crazy. Reynolds himself tweeted it out. And Funny. also in the positive camp, uh, the actor strike is over. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, Sack After. Congratulations. Yeah. That was a that was a long one. The longest on yeah. recorded. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a three-year deal again. So hopefully we won't be doing this again in 2026. <laughs> right. um, we still have maybe a VFX strike uh, before us next year. And sure. who knows, uh, animation, voice actors, everything else. Um, 
a long way to go, but let's celebrate this win for now. Even even the um, uh, reality dis- uh, mm-hmm. actors or right. actors, whatever the, the stars are, are in that, are talking about unionizing. I think Beth- Bethany Frankel was was right, talking exactly. about the really exploitative nature of that part of the industry. So. <laughs> I mean, it's it's for the best that we have a sort of revolution in work standards because the thing is, it, things. So yeah, the standards are changing because of changing technology and changing tastes, and uh, they've just been taking advantage of it every right. turn by the people right. who have the money and power. Right. But yeah, and then the plus side with the strike over, uh, Deadpool three and Venom three are both going into production immediately. Wow. And um, we have production for multiple projects reportedly beginning in January. The ones that were reported were Thunderbolts, Blade, and Wonder Man, which pe- some people are surprised by because Joanna yeah. Roberts had said something that made a lot of people think it was canceled. But I think that was just yeah. Rumor. Okay. I, yeah, I would be surprised if it was canceled. Okay. I okay. am not wondering if, yeah, like we speculated uh, one of the previous podcasts about a lot of this material that we're hearing, we're mm-hmm. behind. They've already right. made a whole bunch of decisions. Mm. Right. They're just right. now, this information is either being leaked intentionally or through good reporting or what have you. We're just now getting stuff that is, what, three, four, six months already decided. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see what what, when it hits the screen is when we'll know. The other thing, a uh, piece of news that came out is that Captain America New World Order is the next one that's up for extensive reshoots. They're okay. apparently. Yes. I mean, but this is normal, right? Uh, um, it sh- yeah. should, it shouldn't be. Yeah. What I mean, is, but it, it, is, it's nor- it is normal for MCU projects. It is. Right, if you right, go back normal. through the MCU projects, they pretty much all undergo some form of this process. Maybe not as extensively as, uh, for instance, you know, Daredevil. And Blade right, or uh, right. Daredevil, especially, which was reportedly just like, nah, start over. <laughs> well, my, my, my issues, I have issues with Captain America. So, uh, why? What, what, do you, what are your issues? It's all about Mackie. <laughs> you don't like Anthony, <laughs> Anthony Mackie? Mackie. No, <laughs> he's, a, he's a long time. <laughs> he's a long time about, Anthony Mackie. Yeah, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> why? What did he do I, to you? <laughs> <laughs> it's too, I don't know if we can get into it. <laughs> we 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 will cover Mackie. Okay, we will okay. cover Mackie. Well, we, th- this film's coming. We'll cover We're going to be covering it. <laughs> yeah, we'll cover Mackie's portrayal of, of Sam. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, but whatever. I just wanted to like quiet some of the rumor mill that say some of the uh, reshoots have to do with. The uh, the character Sabra, who mm-hmm. is a character from the comics, who is um, Israeli, okay. and uh, she apparently in the MCU she will work for the CIA, not the Mossad, and right. it will the plot will not in any way involve Israel and Palestine. So that's not the source of the reshoot, okay. reportedly, uh, according it. to several insider reports. So hopefully, all of this will be long past by then. <laughs> Right, but uh, in any case, right? that's not what it's about. Right, twenty twenty five is the expected for Captain America. Yeah, so the reported new release dates are for Deadpool three. It's now July of next year. Uh, then Captain America is February of twenty twenty five, and then we have Fantastic Four coming in May, and we, we should expect some uh, casting announcements uh, about the Fantastic Four within the next couple weeks. Um, then, yeah, so there's going to be four movies in 2025, Captain America okay. four, Fantastic four in May, Thunderbolts in July and Blade in November. Okay. And only one in 2024. Uh, yeah. And, and just Deadpool that's three it. and three out. Yeah. 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 Going to be a that's quiet it. year in the MCU theaters. That's what the folks wanted, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it's, Give people a chance know. to. That's what yeah, they gotta, is, yeah, production to work it out. Right. Is four the right number for big screen MCU titles for a year? Does that feel right to you guys? It doesn't. It doesn't feel maximum. off to me. That's max. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And what? And what? Like two or three television shows? I think that would be sufficient for, yeah. for me. I think like five or six titles in total, be they shows or TV. That kind of feels like. Any more than that, then I feel like I'm drowning, like catching up. Yeah. 
I'm I'm more of a a more is more for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I but I'm drowning in with... comic books over there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. I was I was catching up. I this need week. I yeah. need to yeah. catch up on other stuff. There's other stuff I gotta watch. I guess. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. I don't disagree with any of that. <laughs> but Give me more. Just, I want it all. Give me all. But of it's it. also just you know you can see when they invest in fewer yeah. projects, the quality yeah, goes up. Yes, exactly. Obviously, yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah. yeah. We want yeah. quality. We want mm-hmm. quality over quantity. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Now, and you got some notes on Loki gossip here. What's this about? Uh, Eric Martin, the head writer, he said that the original season ending of the of this season was vetoed by Marvel, and okay. this is actually the ending. The episode five a script was what hooked the directors Benson and Moorhead, but then quote unquote nuked by higher ups. Okay. So yeah, I have to thank I have to thank uh, new rock stars for bringing this to our attention. But okay, I makes me wonder if this could be related to the character they couldn't use. Uh, uh, apparently, okay. they had to write episode five over the course of a weekend. But I don't know. Do you guys like now that we've seen this masterpiece of an ending? Would we have wanted it to be anything else? Mm, I I can't imagine anything. I don't know, Jean. What do you? Yeah, I can imagine of an ending. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, uh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I could, I, I could see it going a different way. Definitely, <laughs> it doesn't take away from what this was, right? Mm-hmm. Like this was the the ending. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But you know, storytelling wise, there there are, there were other ways they could have gone. Absolutely, yeah, cool. sure. Yeah. All right. So whatever. I'm I'm hoping that this marks this new era for mm-hmm. MCU making because I think for me right. showrunners and exactly yeah. Yeah. And it's a singular yeah. vision that mm-hmm. they yeah. have um and they had to fight for it. I'm I'm all for showrunners and writing fighting for their decisions because it's gonna sharpen them and it's gonna make them think and it's it's like work it's like mental workout. Oh, okay, like I know the execs are gonna get crazy with this. They're not gonna like it, but here are my arguments and you know, that just is going to make people better and that that's going to make their creative projects better. So it's fine for that tension to exist. Mm -hmm. All creative process. I think my, my, my belief is, is that that needs that. And I'm so satisfied. I'm so happy that a creative vision won out rather than corporate pablum, you know, that that we actually got something that is, tells a new type of story. The fact that, Oh, man, to to turn Loki around and give him this heroic, not death, uh, but this uh, just so bittersweet, so good. Oh, well, let's save it for the episode. <laughs> let's get into the <laughs> thing. All right, cool. Anything else on news or or general context stuff? No, just um, I think there seems to be a general, you know, there's going to be the haters, whatever, but it, yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like the, uh, there's an uplifting people are feeling more confident in the MCU again after right. this Loki, uh, the Marvel's weekend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So two in a row, like that feels mm-hmm. good with potentially a strong echo coming in the early year. Right. Uh, yeah. Really and that trailer for Echo also helps. Yeah. yeah. And what and if there are three different flavors of things too, which is yes. also good, you know, yeah. promising. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked about, I think we've state. talked about this too before, like have, have a diversity of offerings, you know, everything mm-hmm. from kids through adults, you know, that's, that's totally valid. And I, and I, and I think it's a good idea and a good model because yeah, I want something that's a little bit more challenging or a bit bittersweet or every once in a while, I want the popcorn of big explosions and, right. you know, you know, wild uh, VFX and stuff. So yeah, yeah, cool. exactly. All right, let's take a quick break, and then when we get back, we can do our full episode breakdown. And we're back. So during the break, we decided we'd juggle things up a little bit. And Jean is going to bring up our comics corner stuff because it's going to help contextualize the story a little bit more. So Jean, talk to us about the God of Stories. Okay. So, on, you know, when I watched this again, I, I, I felt I needed to go read Loki, Agent of Asgard comic arc. So. 
in that comic arc, he goes from being uh, the god of mischief to the god of lies to the god of stories. Mm-hmm. We have a young adult Loki and an old, old end of time Loki as the main protagonist of the story. In one of the arcs, he's confronted by Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom is you know, a major more of a villain, a villain of the Fantastic Four primarily, but in the Secret Wars from 2015, he takes on a huge role in that entire storyline, right? So this Dr. Doom realizes that this young Loki is not of his time. So he needs to con- contain this this version of Loki. I'm just going to read this panel really quickly. It's from a conversation that Dr. Doom and Loki are having. It's from ep- um, episode. It's from issue <laughs> number. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's from issue number six. Consider this. This is Dr. Doom. If magical thinking is the assumption of a higher narrative in the flow of events, true magic is the imposition of a narrative upon reality. It is telling a story to the world and making the world believe it. The dark work of police and politician, of rulers and tricksters. And if magic is narrative, then to be a creature of magic, to be a god, is to be a creature of story. Finn. Hmm. That's that's totally episode five, right? Hmm. Loki saying I can rewrite the story. To rewrite the story. <laughs> so these guys read the comics. They had yeah, to. well, obviously. And isn't uh, Verity uh, Willis, um, B-15's yes. other alter ego, is an important part of that story, too. She is, um, some say, a love interest of Loki, of mm-hmm. young adult best Loki. Friend. But they are best friends. Mm-hmm. You know, they are best friends. It's very much a platonic um relationship to the point that we, no we see there. them no <laughs> shipping no shipping to the, to the point that we see them Loki through the end of the secret wars of the incursion storyline okay so okay. i just felt like that when i read that mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. really informs what this series has been about mm-hmm. for right. me in my mind yeah yeah definitely right so this uh, i i don't know i i, I might have to get that quote from you and, and process that several times. Cause my brain was just yeah. tripping off so many different clauses and, and parts of this, the, if the magic sentences. is narrative, if magic is narrative, then to be a creature of magic, to be a God is to be a creature of story. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's wow. Yeah. Very, very cool. We gotta we, we, maybe we gotta get sorry, sorry, in. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. I was just saying we have to get Marilyn in on some of these conversations here. Mm. So Yeah, right. I can't wait to hear her thoughts about this episode yeah. because yeah, absolutely. The, especially yeah. the Norse mythology uh, angle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, are we ready for the episode breakdown? Alicia, do yes. you wanna take us through as uh, you usually do? Thank you again for all the hard work you did for this season. It's absolutely been really great to have your contributions. I love your title headings and uh, and your <laughs> phrasing. So it's it's been great. I like it's to play with words. They're my favorite toys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's begin the time loop tango. Uh, So (laughs) the usual Marvel's opening credits play backwards, leading us into the TVA control room. At the moment, just before Victor Timely, Jonathan Majors went down to suit up for operation throughput multiplayer installation in episode four. And Loki, Tom Hiddleston, is determined that this time he will make it work. Or next time... He time slips back to keep trying over and over, pushing the gang along faster to everyone else's confusion, going back earlier in the day to rush everyone through the events of previous episodes to hilarious effect. He even tries roping in Miss Minutes, Tara Strong, to help at one point, but it's never enough. We get to see Victor Timely get peeled like a grape by the time radiation (laughs) over and over, screaming like one of Thor's goats. Is coming um, anytime. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, new rock stars, they paused it and zoomed in on it, and you really see like the skin peeling off the skull. Like Amazing. they really yeah. went all yeah. in on the graphics. 
<laughs> um, but during all this, Loki keeps turning to Ob Kehui Kwan for advice until he finally asks him how long it would take to just learn everything Ob knows about mechanics, physics, and engineering himself. Ob says decades. Decades. Uh, Victor timely in- interjects centuries. Cut to the title card. Centuries later. And Loki is walking into the control room with an upgraded throughput multiplier while Casey, Eugene Cordero, tries not to question his surprisingly advanced engineering skills. <laughs> By this time, Loki has worked out every step of the dance through countless rehearsals, answering every objection before it's raised, figuring out and memorizing the necessary passwords, warning Victor of the mistakes made before, like setting the device down on the gangway where it will be blown away by the temporal radiation. And this time it works. After much suspense and near mishap, Victor is finally able to launch the throughput multiplier into the temporal loom and get back safely, but it's still not enough. The timeline is branching infinitely, and it soon outgrows even a widened time loom. It will never be enough, they realize together. It will always fail. And in this moment, Sylvie, Sophia DiMartino, understands she ultimately caused the problem. It's almost like this was doomed to happen the moment the timeline started branching, she says. And Loki knows what he needs to do next. Oof. Pretty big scene. Yeah. Um, And not to diminish it, uh, but I got definitely Edge of Tomorrow vibes here with this whole thing. And I thought that, and I I was listening to the Ringerverse and Joanna last week. Uh, and apparently, or in the, in, in weeks before, and apparently these writers and directors are big pop culture nerds. They love mm-hmm. Lost. They love Doctor Who, all of this kind of stuff. So for me, knowing that and seeing the scene, I felt more, it was just a great big love letter to every timey wimey homage mm-hmm. of do over soup. You know, it was, it was really, I love really a time well loop done. story. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was super you know, good. Groundhog day. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Edge of tomorrow looper. Yeah. yeah um, for sure. Palm Springs. Yeah. And the music was doing a lot of, uh, good work. A lot of the heavy the lifting. Yeah. 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 Setting the pacing here. The, and the, the role, the backwards running, uh, Marvel logo, that was a very cute little, you know, wink and a nod yeah. to, to the storyline. So really good stuff. And then uh, like another great detail is as we come in on the episode way out at the end of the gangway and then we move in towards the control room and the music is playing as the camera reaches the wall of the control room. They mixed the sound of the siren whale with the mm-hmm. music, and so that the two blended together. And then we push in through the glass and into the control room, like just super. Insp- the 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 visual effects and what they did with VFX was amazing this entire season, this entire show. And you know, to start off a scene like that was so juicy with the music and and just mm-hmm. the the heaviness of of what's going on i just really a master class in production yeah i, I and also the writing was quite strong mm-hmm. you know we're right. already seeing loki becoming a god of stories uh telling every time in every right. repeat he has to figure <laughs> out like how do i tell this story better and faster so that we can move this forward <laughs> right um, john thoughts man um yeah this was let me just start off by saying I felt bad for Victor. <laughs> right, let, me, let me just let me just say that off, off the rip. Okay. I felt bad. I felt bad for Victor because we, we had to see him get peeled over and over <laughs> thousands, probably thousands of times. Seriously, um, for for it to happen and for Loki to learn the lesson. Right, mm-hmm. Victor was the the sacrificial lamb to learn that this is not going to work. Right. And and for Sylvie to to come to the realization that, you know, the thing that she did may have perhaps caused all of this to, to happen in the first place. So they learned lessons of the peeling of Victor Timely skin. I and I felt bad. True. I felt bad. I felt bad. And he was volunteered every time because he did volunteer the first time. But then after that, it's like, every time. like you're going to do it. You you, will. You're going to do it. Yeah. Every yeah. single time. Like, you're the guy. You're the one who's going to do it. Um. But I, it, like you guys, I just, I enjoyed the telling of, of this story, right? 
of having to learn this lesson, having to to learn the engineering aspects of it, and that it literally did take centuries. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't we didn't mm-hmm. cut to a, a scene, you know, five minutes later, and he has all this knowledge. Mm-hmm. It, they, it literally said centuries, you know, had passed between those scenes, and it was a nice way to to say that you know things have to be learned and they have to be earned. Right. And, um, yeah, I just, I just thought everything about it was just going into the, into, onto the gangway, seeing Victor there, hearing Loki give him the instructions, you know, and it is just, just really, really good stuff. Just really, yeah. really good stuff. Well, he was so unnervingly calm to everyone else too. You, it, <laughs> yeah, everyone right. played off of that too. Like, right. why, do you, why do you know this? And what why? Are you right. talking about? Like, what's going on? You can see it in yeah. Mobius's eyes. Like, what? Uh, I think of B 15s face too. B 15s yeah. face. You know, was doing a lot of the work as she's yeah. done. You know, throughout this entire. Um, Season. Too much in the background, but right. yes. too much in the background. But you can yeah. always Critici- one criticism of the entire season is Winnie Masaku just did not have underused, underused, yeah. Under, underused. Yeah. It's fine side characters, but they could. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's also because we've all well, we're, we're all friends of. Uh, sorry, we're all fans of Love uh, Lovecraft Country, You're right? And, yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. And so we've just uh, we know what she can do. <laughs> yes. Right. But yeah. and, and but you get the sense of what she can do in these small snippets of what she's doing in this show. Mm-hmm. And you just want it to be more, mm-hmm. right? You just want it to be more. Um, Especially so yeah. considering she turned out to be Verity Willis, but yeah. Right, right, mm. right. And they could have used that, but, you know, that's that's for another day, another time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It was kind of Sylvie who kind of played that role in the show, I think. The, like, seeing I think so, too. Bullshit role. I think so, too. And Mobius, so too. I guess. I think, no, I think you I think it was Sylvie. Hmm. I think it was Sylvie who who took up that that role of you well, know. Well, she was his foil in his moral conundrum. He she was the one that was you know setting up that check that you know you can't. Well, and we'll get to it later. But there's no you you've got to make a hard choice here. And it was it was her that that played that that splitting role for him. So mm-hmm. yeah. It's uh, whether they could have used Verity Willis, uh, you know, I don't know if that's that wasn't the story for me. I think it was that he had to push up against this hard morality issue. I mean, I think she would have taken the place that Sylvie did. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, And I and I just love um, Loki. You know, you could see through Hiddleston's portrayal of, of the character, the the gravity of the situation. You, you you felt it, you know, you felt his seriousness, his afraid, his, him being afraid. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you saw it came through on the screen for me um, that his, he, he's gone and done everything that he thought that he had to do in order to, to save everyone. And poof, no. Mm-hmm. Like that sense of, of yeah. dread and that sense of of just failure realizing it was all for nothing loki's lose. yeah yeah loki's lose and and having that for that character mm-hmm. is so that that is so deep because when we get to the end of time that is the recurring thing right what what are you going to do you you are who you are you know there's no changing who you are and that's the amazing tie-in that I felt between this series and Agents of Asgard, the comic okay. book. Right. Mm. And the fact yeah. that he never lost his will or his enthusiasm to try to figure it out. Centuries, centuries mm-hmm. of, uh, of doing this over and over and over again. None of us, none of us mortals could do that. It took a God to do that. It took his will and his commitment to his friends, to what he wanted, right? He wanted something Mm -hmm. and he never let go of it. He had to go through some stuff to get there. He had to, and then he had to hear from his friends. He had to hear from Mobius. He had to hear from Sylvie and he had to, 
you know, talk with he who remains to understand the, even the bigger picture. And he never let it go. And that determination was so expertly told throughout this story. It just it yeah. felt so the ending felt so <laughs> inevitable and right. earned for this character. Yeah, and I, and I I'll say, to, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, you know, I just wanted to address related some uh, major criticism I've heard is uh-huh. that, you know, people feel like this time loop setup means that what happened before he realized this doesn't mean anything. But I disagree because mm-hmm. I think he needed to go through all of this yes. to accept the outcome. Right. And then people would have also, and I feel like in this case, rightfully have complained if he just jumped to the conclusion without earning it like this. Um, he had to I'm, earn yeah, I'm so it. glad it was, earned. I'm glad it was a montage though. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And I, and, and the one thing I want to say is at, this is an overarching thing for me, mm-hmm. you know, reading the, the, the stories, reading the comics, whatever comics that you read, whatever comics that I'm reading, whatever arcs, whatever characters, when you see them on screen, you know, you want, you want it to be true to that character, right? Mm-hmm. They don't have to tell the story verbatim for it to be true to the character. Mm-hmm. Right. Correct. They right. don't have to do that. They told this story in a way that makes me say, this is Loki. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is the Loki that I'm currently reading. Mm-hmm. This is the Loki that I read 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Right. This, is the guy, this is Loki. This is the character. They don't ha- it doesn't have to be word for word, panel for panel, you know, theme for theme for you to get the sense that who you're watching on screen is who you've read. Mm-hmm. And that came out to me in this series, in right. this finale, in this season, just good storytelling. You take the base of the character, you build it up, and you give it to us as you see fit. And I think they did an awesome job connecting mm-hmm. those two mediums, connecting the character across mediums. That's great. Yeah. That was really that, that that was really special for me. Yeah. And then you set it to a uh, badass uh, disco version of Beethoven's Fifth. <laughs> you've got a you got a winner. <laughs> right. So that song that they set the montage to that is entitled A Fifth of Beethoven. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, three minutes and two seconds long. It was composed by Walter Murphy, who's a composer, keyboardist, songwriter, record producer, wrote a lot of television uh, in the 70s and the 80s. This is his most famous work. And it was released in 1976. And it took a while, but it hit the number one. Uh, and it stayed there for about a week. And then, of course, they featured it in Saturday Night Fever in 1977. Pretty big year for film, 1977, for sure. Uh, But it was the perfect music to set that montage to. And it was the entire song. Like what we hear for the for the montage is the whole thing, a fifth of Beethoven. So, you know, again, music, the music just did so much work in this. And it was a it was fun. It was upbeat. It was serious. But the classical music gave it that kind of different vibe for the show uh, and gave the Loki just gave it a, a more, I don't want to say classy. That's not the right word that I'm looking for, but it adds refined. Yeah. refined it added something to, you know, God, Loki's a depth. God. He's a, he's mm-hmm. a classic, you know, right. He's a classic God, right. He's from North mythology. So it added some import of history to him as well. well. And he's also quoting Shakespeare in this, where yes. he's like, I wasted time and doth time waste me, which so, is from Richard II. Okay, yeah, I was gonna, I saw your note there. Is there yeah, any more on yeah. that or just, because uh, that is a great turn of phrase, right? I mean, I, I, th- I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. I do right. have <laughs> a bit of a lore bomb coming up in the next section about okay. T.S. Eliot. But- <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, let's go. Very cool, very cool. I was also going to just throw out that the uh, on the writing side, the techno babble, right? The, mm-hmm. blah, 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 the throughput multiplier, the inverse flux capacitor, the iron coupling, no, 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 And then he just goes, 
the rings are too small. That was so, that was <laughs> so great. That ignore was so all great. that shit yeah. and yeah. just go, that was so the great. rings are too that small. We need to make this is no problem right here. This is it. This is it. This is it. This is I, I do great. have one small gripe on that, though, uh-huh. which is, you know, at this point, some they realize you cannot scale for infinite. And like, well, duh. Like, I've been thinking that for weeks now, and I just let it go because I'm like, fiction, whatever their solution is. But I would expect that Victor Timely and OB would, and Eugene, for that matter, would have thought of that. What would you do, Alicia, if uh, you got, if <laughs> if OB knocked, it rang your bell right now and had a signed copy of uh, the second second edition of the TVA manual for you? Uh, would you just geek out? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would say, yeah, I would say thank you. And can I come, you know, be a TVA agent just, just at least until I get one of those temp pads and then do my own thing. <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, All right. Uh, what's next? Um, okay. So then we get into some timely talks. Uh, Loki time slips <laughs> back to the last season's finale at the Citadel at the end of time, just as he steps in front of Sylvie who is leaping at Victor's less pleasant variant, He Who Remains, also, play, also played by Jonathan Majors, and she is ready to kill him. Loki tries over and over to stop her from doing it, knowing that this is the moment where it all starts to go wrong, but each time she tells him he'll have to kill her if he wants to stop her, and he definitely does not want to do that. So Loki calls He Who Remains out for just sitting there watching all this go down like it's his favorite TikTok video on repeat. And He Who Remains finally teaches him the trick of time freezing in a totally jackass mocking way. And they put Sylvie, um, they put the Sylvie factor on pause so the two of them can talk. Um, He Who Remains, he knows all about the time slipping, his stammering variant and everything else because he planned it all himself. The temporal loom was designed to be a failsafe. So if he died, it would destroy everything by the sacred timeline because his Kang variants are all out there waiting to destroy everything, including the sacred timeline, with their intelligent greed. Loki's sure he can he can outstubborn all of those variants, though, even if, as he who remains reminds him, Loki's lose. And every moment of peace he's ever experienced was because he who remains was there alone at the end of time. But Loki will not accept that the options are only either this guy's way or the total destruction of everything. He's determined to find another way. And when he thinks to himself, this was all a waste of time, he knows what he must do next. Incredible. What a great scene. Yeah. Yeah. What a great scene. Just everything about it. Just, yeah. Just, (laughs) man. Man, Jonathan Majors was just eating the scenery in this. He was so wacky and funny and serious and ominous and and heavy and light. He was just everywhere he, that that, cons- that construct of Kang that he's created of of he who remains needed to be. He was there like a half a step ahead in his acting delivery. It was really so disappointing <laughs> to think that you know we. That he's an asshole <laughs> or a jerk right. or whatever's going to Real talk, happen. real talk. In my yeah. head, I was substituting in Omar C's face the entire time, <laughs> and he nailed every scene. <laughs> Cast Omar C. Although, okay, uh, so I heard a another option that I would also accept: Aldous Hodge, who played yeah, yeah. Batman in Black Adam. He was the only good part of Black Adam, basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> But uh, okay, I would accept that. But no, it should be Omar C. He's perfect. Watch Lupin if you doubt. <laughs> right, right. You know the thing I loved about um, Chang in this scene was that he so clearly was acting in season one. Mm. Right. We thought he was. You know, at the end of time, this guy is lost he's he's lost the oh like he's a little cuckoo right yeah yeah mm. he's just not all there mm. it was all an act mm. it was all an act mm-hmm. not once did you feel that he was not in control of the situation in this scene totally true mm-hmm. yeah. not once did you feel like he was a lesser version of himself mm-hmm. he felt every bit of the king who won the Kang Wars, mm. who won the Multiversal War, mm-hmm. right? 
he felt every single bit of that character. Yeah. And and I watched it and I was like, wow, this guy here, unbeknownst to all of us, was behind this entire thing. Mm-hmm. And here I am thinking that he's just, you know, nuts. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 there's a like I'm thinking there's a worse version of him. Mm-hmm. No, he mm-hmm. is the worst version. Mm. Well, do you think? Yes. I feel like yes. he's he's worse than Victor Timely, but I feel like there's even worse out there. Yeah. He's the he, how? But do you think like okay, do you think he's the same variant? No, because he's not the same variant as in Quantumania because they no. uh, they reference that variant yes, at the end of the he's episode. Not him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But They're on the that, run from him. You think he's worse than that variant from Quantumania who like committed apparently several genocides before? So has he. Mm, I guess, yeah. Well, there's it's one, true, but right? in a more detached way, I guess. Yeah, which So is has he. he. He consolidated all timelines. What does mm-hmm. that mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, true. Billions. I mean, he consolidated all timelines to, to save something because yeah. otherwise uh, they all destroy Isn't that everything. always the excuse? What? Yes, it is always what? an excuse, right? Yeah. right. What it's is, not that what it shouldn't be challenged. I'm yeah. not saying no, no. that. But let's think about it. Let's, let's, let's think about it. What did he, he destroyed all those timelines to save what? Mm-hmm. To save the timeline where he's victorious. Right. But, okay. but in every other timeline, there's nothing says, left. Yeah, but that's what he that's says. That's what he but says. Loki, Loki doubts that, obviously. Mm-hmm. As right. That's what he says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we don't know the truth of that because we've never seen the other timelines branch out. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We don't know if there are other versions of Kang who lose, not yeah. to Kang, mm-hmm. but to an assortment of, of heroes. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Well, we do We're, know now because we have Loki. <laughs> right. <laughs> Loki is exactly. the only one who makes it through all of that stuff. So we, You're we, my favorite, why, as he says. That's why I need right. this not to be the end of Loki. I mm. need to see a Loki Kang confrontation it, it, in the future it, there's no this. way this is the end of, of Loki. yeah I agree. yeah well what happened Loki. to him so th- so is the tba now set up just to um keep the kangs at bay yes they're monitoring for now that's right. that's my belief my yeah. belief is that the tva is actively using everything that they have mm-hmm. to hunt down variants of kang mm-hmm mm-hmm even yeah. the young little boy making candles at the end who looks even so the young little and, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> well, what, what happens, by the way, to this version of Victor Timely? Yeah, I, I was wondering that right. too. Yeah, we don't know what he becomes, no. what he what he grows up to become. Right. Do they just watch him to make sure? No, but he I doesn't... mean, the one who was like with them doing all of this, you know, while Loki was time slipping. Which I still okay, so I still have I still have a few questions that I hope are maybe answered in future projects. Like, what caused the time slipping in the first place? Do you guys think you have a satisfactory answer to that? I have or do you just no idea, and I don't care. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, uh, firmly in that. What about he who remains death causing the timelines to branch? Do you need a causal link? No. No. I had to call, I had to laugh, by the way, he <laughs> called himself HWR, and I thought he about that. Yes, 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 he did. All the time the that notes. we typed that in our notes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we say he, he who remains out loud, but in the notes, yeah. it always says HWR. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but yeah, and, and just questions like, so the I guess the gang he gathered last episode was from all the branch timelines, so they weren't actually his original friends. I don't think they were, no. No, yeah, because they were from... but. Okay, but he said that um, he who remains said that the failsafe kills all but the sacred timeline. Mm-hmm. But then Loki traveled to branch timelines to gather his friends to put like the pens in the cup, as we put it. Right. So Correct. how does that work? Because shouldn't those timelines have been pruned? Uh, not at all. Not mm, meaning no. to be rude or in any way, but I don't care <laughs> okay. because okay. I got that ending shot of Tom Hiddleston. You know, like I don't know what was going on on his face. I, it's so complex, but and, and with the music, I, I am good. I don't need to break down the timey me stuff. That's just me. So I, I don't want to throw cold water on anybody's you know thing. But you know, yeah, I'm I'm good with with where they did this. Are you? But you're still itching for for knowledge. I hope that they close these little loopholes. Um, okay. 
I care about those things. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And I didn't mean to like <laughs> take the wind out of your sails. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, I think, but, I think, I think he, yeah. if, if we look back and he goes as he's time slipping and he's bringing these characters, his, his cohorts into that room and what year was it? 94, I guess. When, mm-hmm. yeah. So he's pulling everybody out at different points of, of time. Right. But also from different branch timelines, I think, or yeah. I don't think they're different branch timelines. Well, it's that branch timeline when he did in the last episode when he went it back did. to pick them all up. Ah. Then I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm stuck. Oh, my, no. my, well, I'm stuck. But do you <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, it's just a little nitpicky thing that can easily is a loop that can easily be closed. But what did you think about the cyclical nature, David, of the storytelling? The cyclical nature, like the jump back to the Citadel. I, I liked that. I thought that that was great, and I thought it was when we got there, mm-hmm. it felt earned. You know, just go through this a couple more thousand times till you get your bearings. It was a great yeah. way to like <laughs> encapsulate that. I thought from a storytelling, from a TV storytelling standpoint, they trained us properly at the beginning of the episode with the uh, a fifth of Beethoven montage Mm -hmm. so that when we get to the Citadel, they don't have to explain anything. They don't have to set it to any extra special music or anything like that. They just cut, 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 cut the scene or they just edit the scenes together and it felt really good seamlessly costuming lighting actors i i could maybe go back to season one and do you know shot for shot citadel comparisons but it felt seamless to me the acting i mean both hiddleston and and uh uh, remind me of sylvie's uh the actor who plays sylvie's name sophia Uh, Martino. yeah sophia they were just everything about this felt earned and inevitable and it was put together on the production side properly. So I, I felt that the, as you say, the cyclical part of it, it was the proper place for this part of the story. And it was told expertly, confidently. So I never felt lost. I never felt in doubt. Uh, mm-hmm. it, 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 and, and then this idea, this setup of like, well, look, I've been here. My mercy has been to, you know, all those moments of peace and like, whoa, that's a pretty crazy thing to say. And you're a mortal dude. And they did that in the mm-hmm. in the previously on. Right. They showed us them riding in the elevator. And he's just like, yep, just a man. And he's eating an apple, which is a sly right. little uh, thing. And there's right. an apple, mm-hmm. a partially eat, eaten apple on uh, on his desk. Just, uh, yeah, it, it really set the stakes so that when when he does go through the decision-making process that he has to, it feels right. It feels right for the character and it feels right for the story. And then yeah. just how I, I, I felt bad for Victor, I felt bad for Loki. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because Kang basically did to him what he did to Victor. Right? Mm-hmm. He had to learn this lesson and the lesson that he had to learn came at great cost because it meant him having to repeatedly think about killing Sylvie. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Do I do this? Do I not do this? Right. Mm-hmm. Do I do this? Do I it's not? Emotionally toxic. How many thousands of times did he have to live that question mm-hmm. to come to the decision that he made at the end of the scene? How many fights right. did they have where if he had just How many? made one little move and like got her instead mm-hmm. of hit her getting him or something? Yeah, it was really, it had to be so taxing mm-hmm. on Loki's emotion, his psyche. And to, to know that the person who's putting you through this, mm. who's putting you through these paces, fully expects you to do what he's telling you you're going to do mm. because he believes that your story is one that ends in your failure. Right. Mm-hmm. Loki is here to be a hero. He's trying to save everyone. Mm-hmm. And the only way you can save everyone 
key who remains is telling him is by failing yourself. Mm. Mm-hmm. Which is what all Lokis have done mm-hmm. before. Right. All, right. all other variants, right? All, all Lokis other. fail. All Lokis right. lose. You're going to lose, bro. You're going to lose. And I'm going to make you see that you're going to lose over mm-hmm. and over and over and over right. again because you only have one choice. And for him right, to right. break that, 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 that was earned. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. earned. 100%. Just great storytelling. Right. Agreed. Good writing. Right. The, um, just to geek out a little bit more on production, the shot of Loki stopping Sylvie mm. in, when he time slips into his body again, the way that they, where they are, where the camera, again, and I, I, I nerded out last episode about this one, the record shop. Mm-hmm. But on this one, this was a much simpler and shorter one. But they they s- stop the camera sort of behind Sylvie, and it pans around to Loki's right, and then pans back again as that whole scene un- plays out with Jonathan Major sitting at the desk, and and then th- and the two Lokis facing each other, and it's a long shot with no cuts, and it just the way that they told the story and the tension and the drama of all of these characters together was it, it really did lend itself to the, the inevitability and the, the earnedness of, of the storyline and, right. and this progress that Loki has to make, right? The, the, what, what's the old adage about the definition of an insanity doing the same thing over right, and expecting over a different result? Different results. Yeah. He got a different result this time. Yeah. Yeah. And it, what did it took? It took well, he him. He tried a new thing. He did try he a did. new thing. And, mm-hmm. but he, and, and part of the new thing for him was having friends <laughs> and having yeah, a community yeah, yeah. and being part of something that he felt um, was, you know, he was a part of it as much as, I don't know, there's a, that, that two way street of like, of belonging. Are you trying to fit in or, are you, or do you just belong? And and mm-hmm. he belonged. Uh, he belonged with those, with his this little you know cadre of people. He he wasn't just trying to fit in and go along, and and that gave him the insight to to be able to make a to change the equation, and to see right. Kang actively work to erode that, mm. to you know chip away at that. Mm-hmm. That was that 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 just shows to me the type of villain that the character is mm-hmm. right. It's not always about, you know, the, the big explosion and the snap and, you know, doing away with, with countless people and that sense of, of, of just dastardly villainy. Right. Mm-hmm. It's this little thing. Like I'm going to chip away at everything that you hold dear at the things that you think you are until I get the outcome that I want. What was me. his outcome that he wanted? Did he want to be replaced? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think you know, so. was I he think tired? He, he was ready to lay down his burden. Yeah, this is why I think he's by far not the worst of the Kangs because mm-hmm. he genuinely thought like, okay, this is the best solution that I could work out. And he didn't want to just like walk away without handing it over to someone else. Right. John, you look like you look like you disagree. <laughs> John's got a look on his face. I don't know what Dad would do for that. Yeah, I just I, I I just think this this character of Kang is is just dastardly. Mm-hmm. Like because he's done. I mean, not terrible. General, but just this one. This one. This one here has yeah, done yeah. terrible I mean, things. Also, he's done yeah. terrible things, horrible things to get to this point. And just because he's at this point, I refuse to to sweep under the rug the terrible things that he's done to get to this point. Mm. That it doesn't it doesn't hold weight for me. I think mm-hmm. he's I, I, I truly believe that yes, there are other king kings, there are other kings who want to rule all, you know, rule all, they wanna take over, they wanna do all these things, but that's essentially what he's done. He's given people a, a semblance of what they think is free will, but mm-hmm, is it yeah. really free will? 
<laughs> did, he look will, beyond, right. did he look beyond to solve the issue so that he's not having to do what he, he did? Like, he didn't examine the equation. No, it's, everything is on my terms. Mm-hmm. It's right. my terms or no terms. Mm-hmm. But at least, I, I mean, he's a good villain because yes, I yes, understand yes, why yes, he's doing yes, what he's doing. Yes, yeah. yes. He's a great villain. <laughs> but he's a but he's a he's villain still nonetheless. Villain. Yeah, still a no, capital yeah. V villain. <laughs> Cap, capital V I L L all the all the alphabets. He's a mm. capitalized right. um villainry. So I really and I again I get that we will probably see down the line versions of Kang that are much more bombastic on screen than you know, in, in terms of the destruction that they wrought, mm. right? That they mm-hmm. will bring to the MCU that we get to visualize and see. We just didn't see this Kang do that, but he did. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's more he insidious did. because he was like, and it comes to the question of what's worse if you kill five people with your own hands or a thousand with a push mm. button. Mm. And, I, and I think he's, he's done both. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's killed billions with right. Push of a button, That's what I do for pushing the button the and with his own hand, room. yeah, and with his own hand, right. Mm-hmm. So that and and just the level of again the glee in his eyes as he watched Loki repeat this over and over and over and over again. He was having fun. He it was almost like watching um, Ms. Minutes when when, when the cube was was crushing. Right, you know, <laughs> the the captives in in the room <laughs> in the crushing captives room. You oh, know what I mean? <laughs> and her face was like gleeful, but you it got was. this glint. You got this glint in his eyes as he was watching Loki repeat this over and over and over and over again. Mm. Like mm-hmm. I, oh, he was having fun because well, think about it. This is like the most entertainment he's had in centuries. Hmm. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, and watch he's been waiting for this moment for how long? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for this yeah. whatever happens here. Yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah. which we can't. It's like impossible for us to imagine that, right? Right, <laughs> right. you know, right, right. It's right. totally beyond our our capacity. I, I'm really curious, uh, Alicia, for your war, your your lore. Yeah, yeah. On- so, so also, yeah. So uh, Loki quotes T. S. Eliot in this scene. He says, okay. "We die with the dying. We are born with the dead." Which is, uh, it's an excerpt. From T.S. Eliot's Little Gidding, which is a poem uh, first published in 1942, which is the last of his four quartets. So these are poems that were written during World War II and published immediately after. And the full, like, the full quartet almost, Mm four-line thing of that is, we die with the dying, see they depart, and we go with them. We are born with the dead, see they return and bring us with them. Mm. And... So overall, the four poems are about, respectively, the first is about the futility you feel when you face the Ouroboros nature of time. <laughs> and I'm using the word Ouroboros. No, but no it's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> correct. But it is all about the cyclical nature mm-hmm. of time. Uh, the second poem is about the range of emotions experienced and personal perspective gained from enduring the Ouroboros mm. of time. The third is about the perspective on humanity gained from an- undergoing the Ouroboros of time. And finally, the fourth, the poem that's quoted here, is about finding salvation and rebirth at the end of time. Wow. And so that's oh. that is that's what Loki goes through. Yeah. yeah, is this cycle is that he has to yeah. find his humanity and he has to find this perspective. So, and he has to deal with it. Uh, so like Jean said, you know, fighting with with Sylvie over and over again, and the the heaviness of that, and. The thought of losing his friends, it's it's all there. And no, I'm, I'm on my soapbox here for just a hot <laughs> second. No AI is ever going to pull that together like no. this. Right? No, this we agree. Human, yeah. This is human perspective. You know, but this could, is someone who, yeah, exactly. has a connection with the with his poetry and, you know, brings it uh, to bear on this series with a similar theme. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and yet. So the last part of that um, last section of the the poem and of the book is we what we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning, which 
requires mm. me to immediately misquote the Wheel of Time and say, <laughs> the temporal loom was not a beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings in the weaving of time, but mm. it was a beginning. Mm. So I think that leaves, that suggests a note of hope for people mm-hmm. who are saddened by the way this ended. Right. Um, and interestingly, the poem slash uh, quartet, which you, you can find it online. It'll take you like half an hour to read the whole thing. Okay. Um, it's, it ends with, All manner of things shall be well when the tongues of flame are enfolded into the crowned knot of fire, and the fire and the rose are one, which kind of describes to me in the way things like Loki not, knots things up in the end, which mm-hmm. actually the name Loki is often translated from Old Norse as not. That's one of the oh. translations of his name. So there you go. There you go. Yeah. Good writing, right? Good writing. So always, if you hear something that sounds like poetry in a TV show, always Google it. <laughs> or <laughs> come to the Lorehounds podcast because right. uh, we're going to unpack <laughs> we'll, it for we'll, you. No. <laughs> Actually, go and read the thing. <laughs> right. No, that's good stuff. Well, it's yeah. interesting. One of the couple times we've had these comments where people have written in and said, you know, one of the things that I value about this kind, this style of podcast is that you guys pull these references so that then I don't have to, or I get them in a way, I get them distilled in a way that I can, you know, pick up and and continue on without having to take the moment, read the Wikipedia while I'm ignoring my domestic chores or my job or, you know, family. Well, okay. So I have to say this one, uh, if you want to find a good, a good, Mm -hmm version of this go to davidgorman.com which is like a a if there if chaotic good was a website it uh-huh. would be davidgorman.com okay. which uh, <laughs> he has he's apparently someone who specializes in like methods of learning from a, a philosophical and practical point of view okay. but then he also has a huge recipe section which is just astounding and i definitely bookmarked it and then just has his grab like food recipe of, food recipes and okay. then just have this grab bag of uh you know these old t- texts from prior decades and centuries that he's put online that are uh, you know roughly related to what he's interested in okay should we put that in the uh in the show <laughs> in notes the show note, probably sure. yeah let me copy yeah that the right link now. to the four quartets cool uh all right good stuff yeah so when there's a show that's operating in these I'll say depths of waters, It you can feel it. You don't always necessarily know it or understand or can pull the references, but when there's thought behind a story constructed in this way, it comes out on the screen. And even if you don't understand at the end, what did I just watch? You felt like you watched something, mm-hmm. that your spirit was challenged, that your mind was challenged in some way. And that uh, it just makes me, it, it just warms my heart to know that that this pull and i'm glad you pulled this because otherwise it would have just passed me by all right you guys ready for some more heavy conversations with loki (laughs) (laughs) let's go all right uh, alicia you want to take us into the next scene all right it's time for our last dance mobius Mm. Um, (laughs) i do like they gave them the this time with each uh, person yeah yeah Yeah. it was nice it was nice yeah But Loki, he time slips back to the first episode of the series where Mobius, Owen Wilson, is confronting him with his life and death on the sacred timeline. And we witness that previous Loki talking about how he was born to be king and was ready to uh, ready to claim his thrones. But then new Loki slips in and surprises Mobius by recapping everything Mobius has planned for this conversation, including the callback line. My life was a waste of time. Loki asks Mobius how he chooses who lives and who dies. Sorry, who to prune. And (laughs) Mobius tells him a story about a couple of hunters named Mobius and Ravona Renslayer, Gugu and Bakura, (laughs) who (laughs) went on a mission around the Black Sea to find a variant who was going to be responsible for 5,000 deaths that were not in the proper flow of time. But Mobius couldn't do the job when he finds out it's an eight-year-old kid they're supposed to prune. So timelines branched, new variants appeared, and a couple hunters died cleaning up the mess. So Mobius became an analyst, and Ravona eventually became a judge. Mobius leaves Loki with some tearful words of wisdom and a handshake before he spaghettis away, and Loki is left standing in the void outside time. So, Oof. yeah. Heavy. Born to be king. 
Yeah. Every. Do you think, Sean, that um, this whole Black Sea thing, uh, could this be a reference to Doom? I thought that the Black Sea reference was oddly specific. Yeah. Yeah, right? Why say that? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Because I, I guess I would have to pull up a map of the MCU to see well, where Latveria they, is. Like Latveria they, is one of those countries that moves yeah, around. That, that's like around. Wakanda. Yeah. So, no, it's pretty stationary. So, yeah, yeah, but I mean, we don't know where it is in the MCU. No, that's what I'm saying, where we don't yeah. know because we haven't seen it. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of, of, of its placement in, you know, the comics or whatever. Um, it's been several different places in the comics, even. Let's see. Let's see. I, I have to come back to that because that's, okay. that's a good question. That's a good question um, because who was that little boy? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it also seems like 5,000 isn't that many when you, like, talk about the biggest <laughs> death dealers in the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird for us to be debating <laughs> the moral <laughs> relativism of it, but, you know. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, I think, I feel like Victor Von Doom has killed more than 5,000. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. He's, he's ended entire universes. <laughs> right. So, yeah, he's much worse than 5,000. Yeah. So, <laughs> Owen Wilson in this scene, just, ah, oh, man. Yeah. Both Very him and Tom, and Tom, everybody, but this scene of Owen Wilson with his pursed little lips and... Uh, <laughs> You know, his eyes, his, his hair, it just the little nose crook, everything. He And then they did this thing, and they did it with Sylvie too, where they do these like really extreme close-ups on their faces, mm-hmm. which really gave me a lot of, um, uh, oh, what's the uh, director that a lot of Owen Wilson's uh, movies he's in? Uh, I'm blanking, like Tannenbaum's. Oh, like oh, oh um, Wes Anderson? Wes Anderson, thanks. Sorry, my my brain, the synapses of my brain are, are <laughs> slowly aging. Um, but it felt very Wes anderson in a way. It, it mm. just created a sense of intimacy and connection between these two characters. And it was a little weird, but at the same time, this is the last time that these two characters really get to have a, a one-on-one buddy moment. And right. mm-hmm. I'm, I'm right. glad that they, like you were saying, uh, Jean at the top here, that they took the time for these characters to have this time. Right. And then for these actors to just nail it, just to absolutely deliver on every line, every look of face, every emotion playing across them. It was exquisite it was just a really wonderful scene to watch yeah yeah and the music again the music like what the hell is the show <laughs> i know it's, the more that we unpack it the more i'm like oh man you know maybe it's gonna Pay attention to detail. yeah you see sean and i've been saying top five all along <laughs> top five man top five it's, tough, though. It's, it's, it's not a it's not a it's not an easy year there's there's some things out there uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's easy year. It's easy. <laughs> it's easy. Some things are easy. I already, I already know I where I'm a, at. I did a pre-ranking already. I went through and sort of combed through my list to see where things were, were shaking out. So, mm-hmm. uh, And then like thinking, does this belong here or there or what have you? And, oh, I don't know. Loki's going to have to push up. I Definitely. So. Mm-hmm. No, and I, just the writing. These conversations are where Eric mm. Martin's writing really seems to shine. Like he really... I mean, Moby, Moby has hit a nerve with me with like most purpose is more burden than glory, mm. which is the new, mm. which is the new, mm. like with great responsibility, yes. with great power comes great responsibility. Great responsibility yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then this exchange just destroyed me where Loki says, how do you live with it? And Mobius says scar tissue. Like yeah. I had to pause and just <laughs> <laughs> feel something there. It makes but me that, but how, how true is that though? You know what I mean? Yes, it is because we That's don't the human experience. We're yeah. not talking about you know murder here, you know, mm-hmm. in our own personal lives, and you know, but how do you deal with the with the pain? Yeah, yeah. our tissue. It yeah. makes me think of Marva <laughs> mm-hmm. from Andor when she's saying, you know, to to Cassian, he's he's saying, "Oh, I, I'm worried. I can't. How how am I going to you know go on without you?" And she's like. It's just love. There's nothing you can do right. about it. Yeah. You, know? right. you, you just and have to be able to. Grief is just love persisting. Yeah. 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 There are some things that can't be healed and you just have to keep, right. you have to find a way yeah. to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Yeah. Or as he puts it here, there's no comfort. You just choose your burden. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, ain't no comfort of the TVA. <laughs> no, nah, and, and you know, that, these are the facts. These are the facts. Because when you think about it, right, he says, you know, I had, we had to get everything back together because a few hunters died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. But how many non-hunters have died in, in under the TVA at this mm. point? Mm-hmm. Right. Which is why I keep going back to saying that this this king is is terrible. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because even at, at, at in this moment, Mobius is so wrapped up in doing the work. And what is the work? Mm-hmm. The work is right. taking mm-hmm. people out. Right. That's the work. Right. Pruning. Pruning. <laughs> Right, and That's then where do you work. end up when you get pruned? It's not so great. <laughs> right, right, right. And then, and, then, and then he gets asked, how do you keep going on? And he, the only answer he can give is, is, is the scar tissue answer because there is no mm, answer to what he's done. Yeah. The truth. There's no suitable way to say how I go you, on. Scar tissue is tougher than regular tissue. You know, it's ugly, but mm-hmm. it's uh, tougher. It's a reminder. You know, <sighs> it's a reminder of what you've gone through. The battles that you've you've waged, the, the mm-hmm. things that you've done, the the harm that you've caused to yeah. yourself, to yourself, the harm that's inflicted on you. Yeah, the moral harm, the moral harm. Right. Yeah, they, it's a thing that we talk about now with uh, soldiers who've come back from uh, war situations. The that the moral injury to them of having to do something horrible. Uh, right. And I don't want to go right. into talking about hypotheticals or, or realities, but the fact that, you know, in that kind of armed conflict, life is on the line. And sometimes the decisions that you have to make take life. And mm-hmm. what does that do to you as a human being? Yeah. That's a huge central theme of Beacon 23, the book, at least. So I'm oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> go listen to the podcast. <laughs> we'll talk about it at the end. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, and and then when you counter that with the fact that uh, he who remains was saying, well, you know, the, any sense of peace that you've had is because of my mercy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh man, it's just yeah. such that's a terrible. Moral- it's because I was there, but that puts the idea in his head, you know, because I was right. there. I was taking there. the burden. Right. right. And it goes to the poem that you you were breaking that down for right. Alicia, of yeah. the, the, that he has to go through to find these perspectives and then to be able to find his humanity to be able to make the, the hard play. Is it, is it cap that says that uh, talks about when it's the conversations between captain America and, and um, Iron Man. Yeah. Where, where captain America is like, I don't know that you can make the sacrifice play. I don't know that you can make that the hard choice. And that's another great ending for a character, right? Is, is that that character went through something and, it felt earned when it happened. And so it feels earned for Loki here in that same way that he made the big sacrifice play. Yeah. Jean, Jean are you yeah. there? Yeah, I'm oh, here, man. Just, I thought you flew. I'm, I'm just, uh, no, no. I'm just, you know, I, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, we, we keep saying it's, it's the humanity. Mm. I, it's not to me. It, it's, it is his, his godly purpose. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it, you said earlier, you know, as he was going through centuries of, of trying to become an engineer. <laughs> I don't know. How, I don't know how many how many masters and PhDs he he earned in right. those time, in that time. But you know, only a god could do that to have oh, that yeah. that and not that die. conviction yeah. and go right. insane and not go insane and not yeah. go insane mm-hmm. sure. and have that and that. Is is something that Loki has been searching for mm. to to attain. Like when he says he he's meant to be a king, he he's he's trying to say he's meant to be where Odin is. Mm-hmm. You know, like Odin, the All Father. That's what he is, right? He's the All Father. Mm-hmm. So he's saying he's meant to be that, and that is such a heavy lift that he's trying to accomplish throughout the, the his arc in the MCU. Mm. He's trying to live up to to that right there. To get on that throne. To become that all father 
the the father of everything that is known. Right. Right. The ruler of everything that is known and unknown, I should say. That's not. It makes it more poignant, too, that he was a complete jerk in the Avengers and like yes, to subjugate yes, people. Yes. Because now as uh, the, this God of time, the, this God of story, he's got this broad where he died. He saw his bro- didn't he see his brother die and uh, or or, you know, he would. I'm trying to remember. With uh, Avengers Endgame, how it went down with him and Thor in the ship. I'm no, Thor, Thor watched oh, no, them No, he die. died. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah Thor watched them die. die. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. And, but still, all of that. T- so, so that he embodies all of these different experiences uh, and failures and triumphs and heartbreaks and um, you know high moments with friends and family. So that he can have a kind of compassion as he sits there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, yeah. could he have had that humanity had yeah. he not lived? Had he just yeah. gotten it, right? And could he have had that humanity without Sylvie, without the version yes, of himself absolutely. that spent her entire life hiding in apocalypses, only seeing Ugh. destruction and longing right. for a chance to live? Right. For a chance to onk, eerie. Onk. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gives the impassioned um, uh, plea yeah. uh, about that. Maybe yeah. we should move into yeah. that scene now, okay. too. Yeah. So Sylvie's final words of wisdom. Um, Loki has one more ca- conversation to have with the other love of his life. He slips forward to the moment they're all spaghettiing out of Obi's workshop in Pasadena, just in time to see B-15, Wunwi Misaku, panic as she noodles away. And once the two Lokis are alone, he stops time to chat. Loki catches Sylvie up on everything he's learned and asks her what to do. She points out that even the sacred timeline is full of horribleness. Is it worth taking everyone's free will away if you can't even give them peace? But what good is free will if everyone is dead, Loki retorts. Sylvie, of course, would rather die fighting. Echoing Loki's promise earlier of never giving up fighting all the Kang variants, Together they decide it's okay to destroy something if you can replace it with something better. And Loki has his final solution. He leaves this soon-to-be p- pastified Sylvie to her fate <laughs> and goes to face his own. Mm. So I do wish they had said it's just okay to destroy something. Punt, you know, <laughs> period. Um, I think some things don't need to be replaced, but that's just right. my little nitpick. Right. <laughs> But that moment of her standing there alone, ready to be spaghetti, was the saddest moment to me. This episode, yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. Because that that version is gone. That version that was her experience. Mm. She gave this wisdom to him, and that was the end of her existence. Right, right. In and meanwhile, he's standing there, just wanting her to give him permission to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna do, do that. that. I'm gonna get out of here, bro. You got this. Yeah. There's no easy answer here, man. You right. got to. You got to figure gotta make this a out. Choice. Um, you have to do it. You yeah. have to decide. I don't think he wanted the permission, though. I think he kind of wanted her to be like, no, like that's not the way. Like, he's like, he needed the, he needed the kick to know that, like, he, what he needed to do was not the easy solution, but was. For him, the hard solution. Where but he did he see? I don't think he saw it yet in this moment, though. Until the end of this, right? It was at right. the end of this. It scene was in this finally, in this right. conversation. Yeah. Right, got there. Right, I, but I think he went into the conversation wanting her permission, a blessing yeah. to. Or he you know, well, he says, "I don't know what to do." Right. Yeah, I think he genuinely didn't know what to do. He's like, "I can't." I think because I think he didn't want her permission because he knew he True. couldn't. Okay, do I'll it. take that. Yes, mm. he, I don't want to do this, but I don't know how mm. else to so explain. Yeah, yeah, help me figure it out. Give me something else to do. Which is which is beautiful because it's it's going to your community, it's going to your friends, it's going to your family uh, <laughs> when you can't see the way out of this p- particular conundrum. You need mm-hmm. eyes outside of you to be able to help you see. And, and again, doing the hyper close-up shots really gave us that feel, gave me that feeling of intimacy and connectivity mm-hmm. between the two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was absolutely visually beautiful too with the spin. Yeah, it really streams. was. It really was. Yeah. Like the visuals for this series are just <laughs> crazy. Goodness gracious. 
And, and I, I also thinking about Sylvie in, in one of her lines about death, destruction, and injustice, right? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of God are you going to be? You know, it, it, it really, she really was challenging. I was really, I felt really challenged in this too, because I'm like, yeah, okay, well, if you take agency and free will away, which is what he tried to do in the Avengers uh, when mm-hmm. he tried to subjugate all those people, he was like, oh, well, we'll just take, you know, I'll, I'll use my magic powers and you won't have free will and everything will be great. But mm-hmm. I mean, she's mm-hmm. like, who are you to take, you know, to tell us that we can't die trying to right. make a better world? Right, mm-hmm. right. And again, going back to her onk earring, right? She's the mm-hmm. symbol of life, but <laughs> life ain't easy either. Just because mm-hmm. you believe in in you know rainbows and unicorns doesn't mean it's easy to achieve that. You, and this is what there are so things that have to be done. To fight for it every day, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And and that's what Kang has taken away, right? Yes, yeah. Which is why he's such an insidiously great villain. <laughs> exactly, and he's trying to convince Loki to do the same. Right to take yeah. to swap out for him so that he can take a take a rest take five yeah. Uh, Jean, which conversation did you find more compelling, Sylvie or Mobius? Sylvie, mm. yeah, Sylvie, because I, I just I just felt like you know she had something with him that none of the other characters had. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because she is a version of himself. Right. She's a version of him. She's a part of him. Mm-hmm. No matter what their, their, you know, lives have been, how different they've been, she's still a Loki. And we always have to take that into consideration. Mm-hmm. So I felt like this was a more compelling, um, for me, it was more compelling just because of that. Because this is a conversation that he's having with part of himself. You know, Loki had to learn to love himself too. Yes. Yes. Right. He had to learn to come to terms with himself as well. And I, you know, and Sylvie's a big part of that. You know, Sylvie has accepted who she is. Mm -hmm. Totally. In a way that Loki 2012 did, has, did not. Until mm. now. So this is, if, if people are put in our lives to, to help us, you know, learn lessons, then she was put in his life for that, for that reason, I think. Mm. To help him see that you have to come to terms with who you are in order to become who you are meant to be. Mm. So. Yeah, I, I thought this conversation, this one hit home for me more than the one with Mobius. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, she really puts it to him. Yeah. And, and she puts it down and says, yeah, you, you can't go on. You got to pick this out. You got to figure this out. And In this a way it. that only, only she could have told him. Mm-hmm. And that only he would himself. have. himself. Right. That, that. <laughs> In a way, she's the only character that could have told him what he needed to hear in this moment. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And they could only have done that because they, <laughs> how much have they, how many times did they fight in the Citadel of time? Right. And, right. you know, he just, this constant repetition of, of working. With well, he her was desperate her. enough. He was desperate enough to be open to new ideas, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's like, yeah. I've literally Good point. spent centuries trying everything <laughs> yes yeah it's time for a new idea yeah <laughs> so back in the tva control room again for the uncountable time and centuries of ground to loki day this time loki volunteers to have uh, to brave the temporal radiation himself without the time suit even so i guess obi's model wasn't loki shaped after all um, he- <laughs> <laughs> they make a little point of it too. <laughs> He's like COB or no C, uh, C, C uh, Mobius. It's, it's not that. shaped like you. <laughs> not like you. I love like just like all the details of the. This is what I love about time loop movies. All the details of when they repeat the days and then you know make fun mm-hmm. of the previous and play with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> his last words to his friends are: "I know what I want. I know what kind of god I need to be for you." 
the two most important phases in his life, sorry, Thor, are framed in the window. <laughs> uh, as the temporal radiation strips away his clothing, his body is unaffected, and a full Loki co- uh, comic costume is revealed, complete with cape and horns. Using his Loki magic, he rends the temporal loom apart, grabbing the strands of time that spill out with his own hands, using his magic to pump life back into them as they die. With a final look for his friends, he gathers them into his hands, pulling them with him into the void where he finds a misshapen throne waiting for him. The gold of the Kintsugi cracked citadel follows him, enveloping the throne, and he sits, wrapping the timelines, nodding them around himself holding on with both hands to use his God powers to keep them all alive in a multiverse where people are free to live their own lives on their own terms. Glorious purpose indeed. As the camera pans out and rotates, we see that Loki has twisted the timelines into the shape of the Yggdrasil, the Norse tree of life. The world tree. The Man. World tree. Yeah. Man. Uh, so, to me, I, 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 Want to interject a really quick comics corner here? Yo, um, yeah. Because I think because oh, okay. I think it's important. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. This is also from Agents of Asgard. Um, Agent of Asgard. This is from issue number eleven. Um, we've we've said a few times here that he's standing, you know, in the void between time, right? And in this issue, we find Loki wandering the void mm-hmm. the sp- there's a space that is not a space the space between the tel- the 10 realms and in that space you must walk it alone mm. he looks up and he says father and odin is staring at him and odin says loki my child who is both son and daughter did i not say mm. Mm. i know you I know everything you are and I love you still. Mm. Loki says to Odin, if you love me, then you know me not at all. Old man. I, I am an old man, foolish and fond and quick with my temper. There are times I show little wisdom and yet here there is wisdom. He's pointing at his eye. Hmm. The strange wisdom of the world tree I gave this eye to. Hmm. The tree that is everything that has its roots and branches and all that is. There are 10 realms in this reality, 10 spheres, 10 universes. The tree winds through them all and through every star and planet. Every hero and villain, every life, every story. I am Odin Borson, who built the world from the corpse meat. I am Odin One Eye, and sometimes my one eye is open. And above all, I am Odin All Father. I am the one who speaks for the tree. I am the king of all stories. And you are my child. Finn. Hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I read it. <laughs> I read it. You know, the, last last night, and I got shivers. Yeah. And I just read it again, <laughs> and I got shivers again. Right. I mean, come on, guys. Come on. This is the best of what this genre does. Right. This is mm-hmm. this is the kind of the quality, the qualitative stories that we want from this genre. Come on, guys. Well, I mean, <laughs> you're pulling together the best literature from the comics and from you mm-hmm. know our world, uh, T.S. Eliot and Shakespeare and all that. Um, and these are just you can tell this is written by a room of writers who uh, just have a passion for the way humans communicate their humanity. And mm. that's what this show ends up being all about. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just visually stunning too. Like I just, in a sh- stunning show of stunningness, this, all, all these scenes, like the scene with Loki, his cape has turned into these mm-hmm. ropes of I know, time. I know, I that as well. Yeah, that was just gorgeous. 
then yep. the when Loki's getting ready to go down the stairs and out onto the door, there's a long shot of him. It just his face, and he's it's like he's looking. You see his eyes and his face move, and he's looking at all his friends mm. <laughs> and getting emotional yeah. <laughs> about the choice yeah. he's about to make. Yes, yeah, it's very is very that scene is very stations of the cross mm. or Catholics who okay. are listening. Mm. Yeah. When Jesus has the cross on his shoulders and he's burdened with what he's about to do, the sacrifice mm. he's about to make, and he's walking that that walk, and the burden is heavy. Which each step that Loki takes, you can see the heaviness yeah. of right. the mm-hmm. burden that he's about to shoulder. Right. You can see the just the depth of I'm at a loss for words. I was at a loss for words watching and I'm at a loss right. for words now. And he says, and, I know what I want, what kind of God I want to be for you and for all of us. Yeah. 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 I mean. And, and this reminds me. So uh, a friend of mine, Bruce Crawford on Twitter, he pointed out that uh, he says, I couldn't help but think of the moment in the 2012 Avengers film when Phil Coulson told Loki that he lacked conviction. Boom. Mm. Yeah, I loved how Loki finally found his conviction and his glorious purpose. Yes, yes, that's a great, great call. Yeah. Great call. And just, you know, him being at the end of time in the space between time, yeah, overseeing it all, and not even overseeing it. I'm not even saying he's overseeing. He's keeping it all together. Yeah, yeah. His role is not to, to, to watch over. His role is to to hold it together. Just be the force Mm -hmm. that holds the universe Everything together. together, That holds reality as we know it together. That holds time as we know it together. That is his purpose. And that is the purpose that he has been given. That is the purpose that he's taken for himself. He realized and he made the sacrifice. The sacrifice is I'm going to sit here on this throne and I'm going to make sure that none of this goes away. And he had one last little hair flip. He was like, Whoosh. <laughs> it wouldn't be Loki without it. That's right. uh, absolutely. And just, right. you know, just awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah. And I, and I love the tie into the comic and that mm. he's having this conversation. And in the comic, he doesn't become this, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and Agent of Asgard, as the incursions happen, what he does is he weaves a story for the Asgardian gods and, and keeps them in sort of like a pocket universe, you know, so they don't end. Right. Mm-hmm. He, he, he told he's given them their story and they are outside of the nothingness that exists. Right. Mm-hmm. And just really, really good storytelling in this series mm-hmm. to even have, you know, Sylvie play a role in this. And for me to go back and read the comics and to see how, yes, I know, you know, Loki trans becomes female, becomes a woman in this comics, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But to have Odin who he's always, always in, in, in constant friction with and constant battle with, always accept trying that. to, yes, yes, accept it. Like, mm-hmm. you are my child. There's mm-hmm. another point in, in this, in this um, series where he goes, you know, yes, I know you. I have a, a, a son, mm-hmm. I have a daughter, and I have one who is both. Right? Because yeah. they, they come to figure out there's a there's another realm and that, mm-hmm. you know, Odin has a daughter, blah, 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 blah. But he says that. He says, I have a son, I have a daughter, and I have one who is both, and I love them all. Yeah. Yeah. This is the stuff that, you know, when I see the type of shit that goes online and, mm-hmm. and purports to be the voice of comic readers, Mm-hmm. Right. No, these right? people who say this stuff do not read the comics. No, I know they, <laughs> at all, at all. Yeah. But they they in, inhabit a space where 
they talk as if they are Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and given face value people believe that they are yeah you because can't, if it happened after 1975, it's invalid. Right. It's, it's not exactly, and just knowing that the comics and this series, again, the way that they tie in together, is just a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Another yeah. beautiful thing was uh, Idrisel, the tree, that vision mm-hmm. of the tree at the end. It was absolutely so, gorgeous. Yeah. I, I tried to do a little reading on it. Uh, I'm not going to even attempt a lore bomb on this thing because it's <laughs> so deep and it has so many connections, way above, way above my pay grade. So there's a great Wikipedia Marilyn, article. Marilyn, we're calling on you. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Uh, or yeah, drop into our discord and jump on mm. the MCU Loki channel and, and give a holler if you've got some insights or email us if, if somebody else out there has a, a particular point on it. I just really like this idea of sacred trees and groves and, you know, paganism and in sort of the Germanic mythology is. George R. R. Martin liked that idea too. Totally. Right? It's, it's all that. <clears throat> Somebody else, yeah. uh, I think, had a couple of trees rolling around in their, uh, <laughs> in their world. It was just a, a beautiful image to end on in, mm. and, for, and, for Loki's story. And I love that it was the time tree, as I'm calling it. Right. It's not mm-hmm. the world tree. I love that it was the time tree mm-hmm. because it's true to his character. Okay. This is what the manifestation would look like because that's the world that he's from. Right. Right. It wouldn't look like something else. It wouldn't look like a loom. It wouldn't look like, you know, mm. it, it would look like this because this is who he is. Right. This is who he is. He is the child of Odin. He is the brother of Thor. He is a frost giant. He right. is the son of Jonathan. This is who he is. So it's, you know, that imagery was really, really, really so great to see because it reminded me like, this is a story of myth. This is a story of heroes. This is the stories that I grew up reading and, and loving before I even got into comics, Hmm. (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. You know, mythological stories were my first comic books. Yeah. As they were you for probably many people. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You, yeah. you can so, tell by my name. That was the first books they put in front of me. <laughs> right. So it, it's, it's really, it, it's mm-hmm. so well done, so well crafted, this series has been. And the finale, the final, that shot of Loki, just, you yeah. know. Yeah. It killed me. Man, you can't, you can't, is it, you you can't script it better than they scripted it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I have an important question to ask, though. Mm-hmm. Um, do you all wear socks when you're wearing your loafers? Because <laughs> Loki wasn't wearing socks. And it's going to, and I'm not going to lie. It took me out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. A weird little net pick. <laughs> it, do, it depends on the season. It depends yeah. on the outfit. Come on, man. Right. Just, he yeah, was rocking can, the no socks. Hey, I mean, I'm going to yeah. tell you, if I'm, if I'm at a, like, Potawatomi powwow. I am not wearing socks with my moccasins. So. All right. See? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it depends on the season, depends on the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, styling the, the cape turning into the, the branches of the tree. Mm, that right. was beautiful. Just, just, just great yeah. stuff, man. Just and that's stuff. what, yeah, it's Teddy Roosevelt said walk softly and wear soft loafers without socks. <laughs> 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 I think nice something one. like that. <laughs> All right, should we uh, wrap up the final scene? Yeah. So, okay, the epilogue, simply titled After, uh, B-15 walks into one of the chrono bays, passing a poster showing TVA agents taking care of the tree of life with the text, let's grow together, nurture our <laughs> nature for a stable future. She throws out a random compliment on the work floor, uh, which now also features employees dressed like nurses or medical staff before checking in with Casey and OB, who think they might have fixed Miss Minutes. All better now. As Casey and OB head to the war room for a strategy session, B-15 lingers to talk to Mobius, who has decided it's time. It's time to re-enter time. His sons are waiting for him. 
and his last job as an analyst is delivering the Kang variant reports, including a brief mention of the plot of Quantumania. Luckily, they don't know about the TVA yet, the Kang variants, but Mobius suggests that they keep the murals showing he who remains pruning the branches of the tree as a reminder not to repeat the past. Obi unboxes some new TVA manuals, now with yellow covers and labeled second edition, and a young Victor Timely makes candles in 1868, glancing back toward the open window in his cabin, but a book never comes through. Ravona wakes up at the end of time. A storm is brewing, and it blows some grass off a metal disc. It's the one from the floor of the TVA. For all time, always. Ravona clocks a pyramid and then a, uh, is approached by flashing purple lights. Presumably a lion, but her face settles in a determined look. Then we cut to, cut to Mobius's, sorry, Don's, suburban home in Cleveland, <laughs> where he's watching another version of himself play with his boys when Sylvie stops by to say her farewells. She's headed out to, she doesn't know where, because for the first time she can go anywhere she wants. That he who remains tempad will sure come in handy. And on his throne of stories, the god Loki smiles with tears in his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Good stuff. Good stuff, man. First question, is Miss Minutes really fixed? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hope not, oddly. Oh, and guess what, Jean? OB is not a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. He turned out that, to be an okay guy all along. For we now. Were, you know, the funny thing is, is that we were... In a way, we were kind of playing small ball while this was playing a whole different Another game. game. And we yeah. were doing our usual thing of hunting for, um, mm -hmm. you know, connections and shadows and who's who's this and what's really going to happen. And all the meanwhile, they were doing something much, much bigger that yeah. we could not. Yeah. There's no way we could have seen this coming. Yeah. And I think yeah. it, it really took this final scene and this final episode for it to really so. come together. Yeah. Final little piece in the Lego set. So. Yeah. Well, do you think um, when we saw the people in the war room at the end, was D90 among them? I think so. I think, I that think was so, totally. yeah. I think but so. how is it? So Ravona was pruned, but he was not pruned in I, the end, I guess, because of where Loki slipped at some point. I yeah I again <laughs> I don't know if I can answer it but it seemed fine that he was there <laughs> <laughs> like whatever <laughs> whatever you know, like everybody came back I'm I'm cool with it they didn't <laughs> they didn't ever show us his face it was it just no. from yeah. behind exactly it, very, it looked yeah. like him from yeah right yeah and where's Brad uh, yes where yeah. is Brad what happened to Brad I guess he Brad, just Brad like, is living his movie star life movie star you know? yeah. movie star life right <laughs> they gave him the life yeah. that he wanted yeah. What's and what's in the second edition of the of the manual? Don't yeah, that's a good listen question. to King. <laughs> <laughs> don't prove the one, right? Yeah, chapter one. Don't listen yeah. to King. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also found it interesting. They referenced uh, the quantum realm where the quantum mania happened yeah. was a six one six six adjacent, adjacent realm. Where, yeah, people had been theorizing in the past that maybe the TVA was in the quantum realm, but nope. Apparently, no, every not at all. universe has their own quantum realm. Yep. So oh, I guess every wow, universe okay. has their own Nor realm and their own, as you know, uh, as Guardian Ten, Afterlife right. and uh, Egyptian Afterlife. And Wakanda and, and yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a lot of worlds. Plane. <laughs> yeah. Child of yeah. worlds. Recast the child of so. Even within each multiverse, <laughs> wait, it's wait, a little. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think you have to go to a different universe to recast Chala, okay, except so. for the, the the child who's going to He's become a teenager Chala. and yeah. meet a young woman named Aurora <laughs> on the streets of Cairo. <laughs> You're going to give I, I want to to baby T'Challa and Storm oh, to heaven. <laughs> That's right. Let's get T'Challa. That's yeah. all I'll say. No, so, child. Back to Ravona really quick. Yeah. We don't see what happens to her. No. She we, they cut. Yeah. And we don't know if that's Elioth. I mean, it feels like the that place. And it that, sounded like Elioth, but then yeah. when I saw the pyramid, I'm thinking more yeah. Rama type. Yeah, oh, exactly. Really? And because so it was then, purple yeah. light, which is both a light yes. of Elioth and Kang. So and Kang. Okay. 
So I was thinking Ramatut. Yeah, it sounded yeah, it sounded like Eliath, but that pyramid means something. The so, other version of King. What about Gugu and Bathara being our next big phase X whatever bad baddie? What about Ravona being our uh, our mean antagonist going yeah, forward? Can't I can't rule I'd it out. Down for that. Can't yeah. rule it out. I mean, she should it at least me. play a bigger role in it. Yeah. Yeah. With Omar definitely. Ski. But yeah, she she I, at least she's a great actress. Role. Yeah. She's a great actor. But I, mean, I, I, I just feel want like the from the way that it ended. Because, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, I just want the Kang storyline to play out just because it's like we started this whole Kang storyline. Let's let's finish this off. And yeah. I'm perfectly happy for a specific recasting, but I'm open to others. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I feel like the way that the this ended for Ravona, that she's very much in play. Totally. Right? For mm-hmm. whatever whatever mm-hmm. comes down the line, that she is going to be a part of it. So yeah. I, I absolutely feel we'll see her. We we will no, see Ravona again. Definitely. If that was Eliath, she's about to put Eliath on a leash. Yeah. Something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, definitely. The way that exactly. she looked, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. Um, yeah. Any other loose threads we want to tie up here, or? Well, uh, so I have a question. If so, if Mobius yeah. shows up back at uh, his house as Don, uh, is is like the other Don leaving soon, or is he going to have to like take care oh, of that? He's going to prune Don. <laughs> no, <he can't laughs> prune Don. I don't think he's going to prune Don. I think he's going to, you know, wander the world, whatever world. I don't I think he's staying. He's gonna linger here, and he was staring at his sons. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't think he's gonna stay there though, mm. because I don't, I don't, I don't think he's going. Because in order for him to stay there, he has to prune Don, and I don't think he's gonna do yeah. that. <laughs> or maybe he timed it so it was like earlier in the day, right before he left with Loki. Yeah, hard to say. Yeah, I, I think, I think he's, I, he's yeah. he needs a break. I yeah. think he needs yeah. a break. Yeah. And so he, he, might, he, might he be, knows, how could he go back to a mundane existence? Exactly. And he might be lurking for a little bit, you know, in the background of Don cool. and, and right. the boys' lives. But I, I don't think he's going to try to, you know, be become Don. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. how many Dons are there? There's an infinite number. Infinite of number of Don. Right. And how I, many Dons survive? Love- maybe some, maybe there's a Don that, that, passes away he could take that Don's place who knows but yeah. I just don't feel like Mobius at this time is a pruner <laughs> right. right right I mean I, I love that th- for this final conversation so before that in this whole last section the music had been down tempo but it mm-hmm. only cautiously mm-hmm. hopeful at first but then it like grew until when we saw Ravona staring down whatever the purple was yeah uh, that was when it really kind of exploded um and I love tell yeah that it mirrored that whole sequence mirrored b15 turning to Mobius and she says are you scared and he's like oh yeah mm. and that's that's bravery you know they keep talking yeah. about uh, going back on the gangplank you know going back out uh with Victor timely to face the temporal decay like be brave, be brave. That's bravery. Is are you scared? Oh yeah, but I'm mm-hmm. gonna do it anyway. Yeah. Um, but then it. for this for this final talk with Mobius and Sylvie, the music just totally cuts out. So we only leave them to their own devices and just hear the wind blowing. Mm. And then we cut and to Loki. This, yeah, and there's this green gold lens flare before we cut there. Yep. Just as she says, it's weird that Loki's not here. Yeah. 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 That's good. But he is. And then his voice, he uh, we hear there. time passes, sort of echo as we uh, sw- swim through time to, to catch up to Loki. We hear yeah. Mobius's voice, Owen oh, Wilson's voice a couple of times deep in the background. It's not even in the subtitles. Um, so it was just yeah. Yeah, really beautifully done. Beautifully done. Yeah. Great stuff. Any and other I- loose dangling threads that you want to wrap up? Yes, a few. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so one is that, um, is that, it was pointed out in heavy spoilers that for all time, always, if you mm-hmm. take the acronym, it's FATA, which is destiny in Latin. Oh, um, okay. That's great. There you go. That's great. Yeah. Um, I have to point out, there are some dangling threads. Like, we never figured out about the war room recording, but I still oh, yeah. like, I'm still thinking that there's, there are some unanswered questions that I hope 
that we just we see all these characters again. I think that we will. Also, the statues in the Citadel. You know, mm-hmm. there was the one that was crumbled. I guess Jack was a nobody. We'll I'll have to let that go. <laughs> I, that's that's uh, my Markley. That's uh, from uh, Foundation. <laughs> just a just a NPC who didn't have any other connection. Well, and I still want to see Locobius ride jet skis together. No, no. That. <laughs> Somebody who's that. got Photoshop skills, send send Alicia a, a, a Locobius uh, yeah. ski do. <laughs> and yeah, I have to credit my friend uh, Aaliyah. She said she called the crew the Loom Squad. So oh, oh, nice. using that terminology, <laughs> squad. do you nice. think we'll see the Loom Squad together again? Yes. Yeah? Yes, I do. I think the TVA is going to play a they, the TVA will play a, a big role in Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty, Avengers Kang Dynasty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There were a lot of questions that they like left implied but not said, like the link between OB's isolated workshop and the TVA and like the whole time slipping thing and stuff. Um, and also, I don't know, I'm thinking Thor must be the character they wanted to use but weren't allowed to. Mm-hmm. And I agree. There were, there were rumors that the brothers that there was a brotherly reunion in the works. So I'm still, I still think that that must be in the plans because there's no way they wouldn't want to see that pay out on screen. I agree. Uh, I'm, I am, I'm so satisfied with the story. I don't, <laughs> I don't want anything else. I'm, I'm happy with, but the nature of the next two but it's his stories. Brother is, I know, is, yeah. but That's it's bittersweet. Thing. It's bittersweet, and that's what yeah. But I they have is. to have something. We have to see some payoff. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Not even some payoff. It's just the nature of of, of the story that they're telling with mm-hmm. Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. This Loki, who is holding everything together, has to be a part of it because if those are the two stories, everything right. goes away. Right. If we're talking about the incursions, we're talking about Secret Wars. We're talking about yeah, Kang it's Dynasty. Be a total reset. Everything yeah. goes away. So this Loki that's holding all the threads together, that's holding the root mm-hmm. together, that's telling, that's holding time together, mm-hmm. has to be involved in some way. Right. You okay. will. You definitely have to see him again. Well, you can do whatever you want as long as you do it right. Yeah, do you it have right. to do it right. Yeah, you have to do, do it right. right. Just do it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, Take your time. Gonna, we're going to sit right here. Writers. That's yeah. right. And we're going to judge no matter what you Absolutely. do. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to critique you. So. Be Loki, not Secret Invasion. That's, yeah, oh. <laughs> Could you imagine if this trio had been? Oh, oh, let's oh, not, 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 not do it. Let's not do it. Let's not do it. Let's not do it. Let's not do it. Nope, nope. Well, let's take a quick break, and then when we get back, we can uh, cover some uh, feedback. John, you covered everything with uh, yes, comic books, yes, right? Yes, done yes, with that. Thank you. All right, all right. Quick break, and then we'll come back, and we'll do some feedback. And we're back. Okay, let's uh, switch into some feedback. First up is Dork of the Ninjas, friend of the pod and uh, faithful voicemailer sender inner. He -hmm. sent in two voicemails. We're only going to play his most recent one. His first one was pre-episode six, and he had a theory about the TVA and seeing the creation of the TVA. Uh, Also, uh, he mentioned the Echo trailer, and I think he's... uh, I guess my, the sense was that he's he's looking forward to it. He was just a little concerned from all the back chatter that we've all been hearing. So, uh, but here is he. Hopefully, that's cleared up. Yes, yeah. hopefully that's all cleared up now. So here's because uh, that started before even the did. filming. That yeah, exactly. All right, hey guys, just wanted to talk to you about the season finale of Loki. Gotta say, I absolutely loved this season. It is easily my favorite of any of the MCU shows at this point. It was already up there pretty high for me, but this completely sealed it for me. I love the idea of just realizing that this is going the God of Stories route in the comics, kind of, but in a different twist. The visuals going absolutely perfect for this episode, just seeing them go absolutely for broke, just seeing all that bunch on the screen, just seeing how it looked fantastic, seeing that we finally get to see Loki make the giant sacrifice play, not just try to win, not try to just be happy, but to just do the sacrifice and do what he needs to save the universe. Well, not the universe, the multiverse. 
being the guardian of it and just bringing back Nutrasil, I think is how you say it, the world tree. Some, some imagery we haven't seen for Thor since, I think, the first Thor movie, if I'm not mistaken. But just a beautifully made episode and just a appropriate end for the character. I wouldn't mind if we never see this never see this Loki ever again, or we like next time we see him is like Secret Wars or King Dynasty. But I just hope that that this is like this is a great send off for that character, if not. And I just think it was beautiful and hopefully Marvel can continue this this type of trajectory going forward. I'm actually gonna go see the Marvels later today. I've heard mixed things, but Hopefully it's not true. Any, it's all good. Let's know what, you, what I think about it then. Let me see it. Have a good one. Thanks, Michael. Uh, thank you. Thank yes, you. this was a beautiful send off for a character for 14 year long run. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think even if it's a pause until Secret Wars, this mm-hmm. is a beautiful place to pause. Yeah, for sure. All right. Next up is Cincinnati Joe, who wrote in right after episode five. You wondered in the podcast why Sylvie had her memories when Loki showed up. This is what I think happened to the characters at the end of episode four. Loki started time sleeping again. Maybe he did it subconsciously. Sylvie used her memories. So even though we didn't see it happen, my guess is that she used her he who remains temp pad to save only herself, return her favorite, uh, to return to her favorite McDonald's timeline. By the way, she didn't seem to act surprised or relieved or happy to see Loki again, which is odd. What does she think happened to him when the loom exploded? Did she not care? Maybe the other three variants cease to exist along with Victor. Loki seems to be traveling to the timelines where they each came from, perhaps near the time when the variant timelines branched that the TVA pruned when that person was originally taken to the TVA and memory wipe to become an agent. Does that make sense? Cincinnati mm-hmm. Joe. Did anybody yeah, have a plate of spaghetti too. that I can try to pull <laughs> apart all of this stuff? But you're, are you online with this, uh, yeah. uh, Alicia? Yeah. I was just saying, it's been a like a big geek time for spaghetti. We had that spaghetti <laughs> analogy in The Flash. We've got this whole spaghettification thing, and... Uh, one of the best Rick and Morty episodes that's ever aired aired this week that was also about spaghetti. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. John, any thoughts on, uh, on, no, on kinda, the, uh, spaghetti? I, I kind of agree with what about Cincinnati the, Joe what, said. Yeah. Yeah. About going back to just before they were pruned. Sure. Those branches, those timelines were erased. So, yeah, I, I get that. Cool. All right, next up is Al Chalant and wrote in two emails, uh, episode five email and an episode six email. Regarding episode five, OB's 1994 lab has the same shape layout, even the same fans on the rear walls as his TVA lab. His TVA lab has just a bunch more junk crowding it. Looks like the roots of the TVA began in Pasadena before it moved to the time doesn't work the same here black hole that the TVA calls home. Is that where they're at? Are they inside of a black hole there to be able to hold that space? I mean, that would m- make sense why they spaghettify, so to speak. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Okay. So, and because we see that, that black hole book mm-hmm. and we never really, they never really talk specifically about black holes other than the meta thing right. of, yeah. of spaghettification. So. Well, I mean, just, just, just to say that's not real physics again. I've mentioned it before. But right. It's fantasy <laughs> physics. <laughs> Alshalant continues, also all the 80s, 90s looks of the TVA tech is now explained by it being constructed in 1994 from a physicist's spare parts junk shop. I think we're seeing the creation of the TVA by Loki and friends and the promise to Mobius that he can go back to his son whenever he wants will be broken when Kang comes along to take over the TVA and mind wipe everyone. Biggest Hail Mary, tinfoil hat here, hold on to something, buckle up, the mind wipes from Kang done at some point are done to everyone, including Loki and the old sleepy drooling man in the war room Mm -hmm. on the table in season two, episode one is a feeble mind scrambled Loki. Okay. Does that make, well, I don't think we No, it's not (laughs) clearly. (laughs) I think this is where we were hunting again, uh, for a show that was playing a different, different stakes than what we were hunting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, 
Well done, by the way. This was written after episode five, so before the conclusion. But but all shall uh, on point here with the creation of the TVA. We have a, well, we have a reinvigoration of the TVA, right? Right. We have a a TVA with a new mission. Mm. So, all right. Um, so Alshalant continues, uh, wrote in an email regarding the name pronunciation. Um, it's a moniker given to me in the Detroit punk scene. My name is Alex and I fronted for a band nonchalant as, and they started calling me Alshalant. Continued mm-hmm. to use it as my online avatar name now that I'm much older and out of my punk rock party days. <laughs> you're never <laughs> out. You're never out. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Even when you're out, you're in. That's Even right. When you're out, you're in. All right, and they conclude with their post-episode six email. They ended Loki well. He's at the heart of the, uh, of, sorry, I was going to say universe. He's at the heart of the multiverse now, mm-hmm. and we will probably see him again in upcoming Avengers films. So this gives credence to what you guys were saying. We see a path forward now in the story with the new TVA, second edition, hunting Kang variants to protect the multiverse. My issue with the War Room recording, it wasn't directly addressed, but I can headcanon my way into believing it was left by He Who Remains since he was shown to be in much more control than we previously believed by the additional conversation he had with Loki. It goes to your point, Jean, that Mm -hmm. the He Who Remains we saw was not crazy, but was in total control. Yep. Hmm. So, do you guys buy, can you guys headcanon that too as well, that the I can. It's all part of his. I can. Uh, I mean, it's not headcanon. I think they explicitly stated yeah. it. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah. I just want that tape player. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. All Sean, thanks so much for all your emails. Uh, give you, us a holler you. if you uh, go see the Marvels as well. I'd love to hear mm-hmm. your takes on those. Marilyn writes in after episode five. We have not gotten her episode six feedback. So, like I, we said, any. Feedback that comes in for Loki episode six, we will include on our Marvel's post viewing uh, feedback section. So if you've got something that you want to send in, because we're just going to keep the Marvel, the MCU shows rolling, you know, interstitially between projects and things like that. So things will always carry forward. So if you've got something, don't don't hesitate. We'll we'll throw it in. Anyway, Marilyn writes another enjoyable episode. My thanks to you all. I found it somewhat ironic that throughout the earlier episodes, Mobius kept saying that he didn't want to know his other life. And now he doesn't want to go back to his jet ski life and would rather save the world with Loki. The point seems to be that whatever life we're in now is the quote unquote real life, at least for most people. Evidently, Brad, the movie star, disagreed. <laughs> yeah. But the real life yeah, is the one where you're a movie star. I mean, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the one where you made it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I found it interesting that the topic of platonic friendships came up and how many of you said that you were ready for more of that. I heard a recent news piece that said that teenagers are also swinging away from romance in their stories and preferring to explore friendships. So I guess y'all are just on the cutting edge of the latest trends. Why does that not surprise me? Well, we don't want to get too far off. We're in, into romances. Our, our, uh, are we a big holiday <laughs> romance movie fan? Or I mean, I have, a, far, I have but, a weakness for Hallmark Christmas movies. I won't lie. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I do in general. Like I want, in my life, my, my personal private life has been full of you know, romance, there's been romance, but there's yeah. been a lot of platonic friendships. And these are some right. of the most important relationships of my life. So obviously, I do want to see those explored on screen. I just right. don't, you know, the people who are like, oh, we don't need romance. I understand some people are aromantic. That's fine. We can have those stories. But romance is also very real and important and fulfilling part of existence for humans. It's true. It's true. Absolutely. We can have stories, guys. You know, <laughs> yeah, you can have stories, you know, you, yeah. you can have all the stories in the world, oh, everything that we can imagine. And I think it's, it's fun to explore them all, even if you don't want to, somebody else will. All right. Marilyn continues. It's very difficult to remember that Sylvie and Loki are, in fact, each other in origin. It's rather like the usual discussions about twins, nature or nurture. 
Here we have some identical individuals in every respect, but with differing lives, they come out very differently. Chuck mm -hmm. went up for nurture. Mm -hmm. I agree that the best part of the show overall is Loki's development arc. The first episode was astonishing. For the first time, we see humans seemingly controlling Loki. How is this possible? There's a power in the universe that is greater than the selfish trickster god? Uh, there mm -hmm. is. She's, uh, I should reread that. Mm -hmm. um, tell me more. And they have, and it's delightful to see Tom Hiddleston really strutting his stuff and Loki finding compassion for others. I'm less drawn in by all the timey-wimey stuff, the notion of sacred timeline, all the branches off from there, etc. It definitely has a more comic book flavor, whereas the beginning episode or two really did seem to be about individuals and personalities, which is of greater interest to me. But it's a fun ride, and I'm looking forward to seeing if the plane gets well and truly landed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All the best. Marilyn. Vroom. We landed the plane, Marilyn. We landed the plane, and it was an orderly disembarkment, and we're on our way to pick up our luggage. We're good. <laughs> on our way we're to good. pick up Deadpool 3. Yeah. yeah. So, well, we look forward to hearing your feedback, Marilyn, because there's some uh, big lore stuff in there. We'd love to, to get your perspective on. So, so glad that you uh, were able to send in all your emails and have been, been enjoying the show. It's really, it's a worthwhile show and we're all grateful for that. All right. Next up is Aaron K. Hey, Lorehounds, just watched the finale of Loki and wow, it was something special. The episode was visually stunning in a series whose special effects have already been stellar. I am by no means an expert on Norse mythology, but I love the time tree created at the end as it's certainly referencing, uh, oh, now I, I had the name in my Do head it. and now. <laughs> you, Do it, David. Do it. <laughs> You're, Ig Giselle. Ig Giselle. <laughs> I looked at Ig those Giselle. jumble of, of vowels, or I mean. Do of, it again, uh, David. Do it again. No, I'm not. The tree of, <laughs> the tree of life, which connects all realms. Ig Giselle. How's that? Ig Giselle. Yeah. Ig Giselle. There we go. Yeah. I can't. You can't think about it, right? You just got to jump. You got to just got to jump. <laughs> but just the Y is a is a vowel, thing. right? Uh, there's a time and a place for soft magic, and I think Loki's abilities in this episode were perfect. His character development in the MCU has been one of the best of the episodes, and this episode has become my second favorite of this year, right behind Foundation. Mm. Can't wait to hear your thoughts, Aaron K. Soft magic. Were you guys good with the way that they dealt with um, Loki and Sylvie's magic this whole series? Yeah, it was okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny because, uh, yeah, because the, the science went hard enough, you know, went right. fairly hard for this sort of, for the MCU. Um, and then indeed, I never really questioned anything about the magic. Like, you know, yeah, that's sure. That's just, they are Lokis and that's yeah. their magic. Right. And they can do the yeah. stuff. Yeah. No, I, th I thought it was. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. No, you know, I'm saying at the end, the magic was anything but stuff. Mm. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. When we get back into magic and, and storytelling, right? Yeah. yeah. The magic was, was anything all, but yeah. stuff. It went hard in the story department. Absolutely. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well done. Thanks, Aaron Kay. Thanks for uh, um, sending in your thoughts and look forward to hearing some more from you. Billy writes in. So glad you read my last email. A few things from your episode five show before getting into the finale. You kind of brushed it over when I mentioned that I thought Loki would time slip back to the first episode because episode five already cleared that up. But I wanted to clarify that I meant the first episode <laughs> of the series, which we kind of sort of got in the finale. Kind of, sort yeah. of. Yeah, we did get it. Yeah, we definitely got it. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, I'm going to take that as a win. Absolutely. As you should. Here's internet points, cereal mm -hmm. awarded, pull the string and have a big thing of cereal drop down on you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think I'm alone in thinking this, but as far as the romance between Sylvie and Loki, I believe their relationship is more of a symbolic self-love. This is what we were talking about before, right? You have to yeah. love yourself. You have to be accepting of yourself, who you are, for everything you are and everything that you're not to be at peace with yourself before you can move, right? That's, that's where you got to be. You got to be centered in yourself. But if you're angry with yourself, you can't get stuff done, right? So That's right. Uh, I like the idea with Loki at odds with his own feelings of uh, doubt and worth. I think 
that could have still worked if they had gone with a romantic twist. But I like to think of, uh, I just like to think of what it symbolizes more than what we see on the surface. As for the finale, I can't believe how epic they made this story. I'm not sure if this is a series finale, but I'd be happy if it was. So a lot of folks are seem to be happy with this idea that this is a, you know, a chapter close. A chapter close. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, I'm happy if it's the last season of Loki, but I'm not happy if we don't see these characters again. Right. Mm. Right. Mm. The chapter's closed. The book is still being written. Right. Right. But luckily, Story still to be told. There's a heavy rumors that Mobius will might appear in Deadpool three. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay, could be a Phil Coulson like uh, type character. Here yeah, and there. well, I mean, we know that Deadpool's going to be jumping around between timelines. So okay, all right. Uh, Billy continues. I was wondering how the MCU is going to move forward with Loki, so powerful that he can c- control time and traverse the multiverse. Kind of like a souped up version of America Chavez, possibly on par with Kang. But they took care of that by making him the keeper of timelines. I can't say it. (laughs) You just sell (laughs) God of Stories. I think this is the last time we see this full version of Loki until maybe the climatic ending of the Secret Wars story. Hopefully that doesn't mean that we don't go to see other versions of Loki, though. All right. So... Mm -hmm. Everybody who knows about the Secret War stuff and what have you still is open to the possibility of Loki. So I think that's a pretty fair thing. I think for me, like, and I said this before, this was just so damn satisfying that I don't need something to undo it. I don't want right. to lose the bittersweet. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think uh, it gets undone. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't think it gets undone. Right. I think it's a continuation of the story. Right. Right. Fair because enough. Because I want, I want this Loki to have more than that in the end he can do this for a while <laughs> right uh billy continues he who remains was absolutely diabolical agreed I, uh, I figured he had all this planned out but it was still great to see it manifest i think this is an important point right they we could have guessed that this was the case but we had to see how it worked right we had to see the mechanics of it work through so the dilemma he gave Loki kind of reminded me of the trolley problem. It's almost like mm-hmm. Loki's solution is to hold the train back so no one dies. Mm. And there's a crying emoji. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the train is still pushing forward and could kill either track at any given time, but it's a stalemate as long as Loki holds on to it. Ooh, this is good. I like this. I like this thought. I like how, how Billy uh, has uh, summed it up. Do you guys, how are you guys thinking about this? No, it's a good, it's a good thought. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what would continues. get him to break it, though? You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what what would be the circumstances? Well, yeah. How does how do you get how do you distract Loki's attention so that he lets the train slip by him? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Billy yeah. continues. I wonder if the pyramid. Oh, sorry, did you have something else, Sarah Alicia? Or? No, I just was gonna. It was a question for Jean. I was just thinking, like, where does this put him in? For instance, uh, terms of the Watcher, like where what's their relationship to each other in watching the uni- the multiverse? Well, I, I I think it's different, and I think the Watcher is is more of a. I think the I mean, comparison the doesn't have to hold on to right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he's he's not he's he's a creature. He's more free. He has power. He's very powerful, but he's not doing anything to maintain reality. Whereas Loki is doing something to actually maintain reality. Right. He, Loki's so, putting his energy into keeping the timelines alive. Yeah. Right. But here's my question. Is Loki watching the Watcher? Or is the Watcher watching Loki? Or are they watching each other? I think mm. both. Because the Watcher is, is, is aware of the other um, higher level of beings. Mm-hmm. Right? So Yeah. He yeah, knows of their it's existence. True. There's like, other god, right? Power living there. tribunal, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. beings are like that. The Watcher is aware of their existence. The Beyonders is aware of their existence. So I think it's both. Okay. Um, Billy continues. I wonder if the pyramids we saw when Renslayer was in the void is a little Ramatut tease. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think that's yes. a, a resounding yes. I could talk at length about everything this season gave us, the cinematography, the writing, the acting, and effects were all so amazing. 
that this show has single-handedly restored my faith in the MCU moving forward. Awesome. The plane Watch the Marvel's turn. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about the show, and I'll be eagerly awaiting to hear your takes on the Marvels. I won't spoil anything, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm glad they're pushing the big story forward. Appreciate all that you guys Ah, do. We appreciate you. you, Thanks for writing in. We appreciate everybody who wrote in. Mm, Alicia, you did see the Marvels, and I Mm -hmm. think Billy's comment here probably comports what what you are, are feeling and thinking, that it's a good entertaining show and moves us forward. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Great. Yeah. And just uh, anyone who likes Kamala Khan will love this movie. But all they're right. all good. Cool. Okay. They all do their roles well. That's yeah. exciting. Last but not least, Abby. Abby writes in saying, greetings, lorehounds. What a ride this was. I'm attempting to structure my feedback on my thoughts and feelings in a quantum physics way. <laughs> so Abby's education background is physics, by the way. Ah, okay. Yeah. okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Abby continues, as an analogy with the duality of light as both wave and particle, not going to bore you with any science stuff, just a sort of philosophical tool. The show is light. The wave function is described by my love for the show, flowing and undulating and growing with every re The particle aspect is manifest by my nitpicks and hopes small enough not to overshadow my love for it. Mm. Starting with my love wave, a visually gorgeous piece of cinema with soundtrack, a perfect match to every scene. David can elaborate more. Go on. <laughs> Praise fest. <laughs> and I agree with him on every point. <laughs> Absolutely. There was a lot to be, uh, just such confident filmmaking. These filmmakers, the cinematographers, the camera operators, the focus pullers, the editors, it was just such a competent, confident effort that it really shows. It really got a really quality product and it feels it in every, every aspect. Loki character arc. Went from a villain to an antihero to a hero, from a selfish narcissist to a selfless responsible god from one whose birthright was to die as per odin to becoming the tree of life from being broken down no magic allowed questioning his every decision to admiring the powers of his other variants to actually controlling time all time everywhere all at once as an aside classic loki's jaws would be on the floor but he would be very happy that he played a part in getting in played a part in getting him there and so all the supporting characters we got attached to, loved or hated, we were there with them uh, with their own glorious purpose of helping Loki along the way. The burden with glorious purpose line has new weight to it. Totally. Maybe with the stress on the burden part, it was beautiful and so Loki of him that after being repeated by friend and foe alike, that sacrifice of loved ones is necessary. He went with, I do what I want, and it is going to be something unexpected and different and gorgeous. He's a, Schroding, a Schrodinger's cat. Uh, low kitty. <laughs> <laughs> is this, uh, are, you, are you down with the, uh, the Schrodinger's well, cat? She, low, she low elaborates. She, she says he is alone and always will be. I made myself to cry typing this. <laughs> but he has the best reason for it now, saving everyone, giving everyone a chance, saving the multiverse from a collapse. But also, in essence, he isn't really alone and never will be as he is connected to all and even the unseen audience. So he's watching us, too, she said. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, it, that's, and that's the beauty of this scene is, is that that final scene of him looking with whatever that emotion is on his face is that he's watching all of our lives as they unfold. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. I mean, I guess he's Schrodinger's Loki because it's like he's out of the MCU, but still in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I also think is great because they did an MCU story, but then they didn't have to worry about what the next movie was necessarily, right? It, it, can, mm-hmm. it can play later. It's fine. But this was self-contained. This is a self-contained. Yeah. Yeah. And any MCU show I watch going forward, I just, I'm going to have in the back of my mind, oh, Loki's there holding all the holding all the time strings together. Happy, uh, Abby continues, happy ending, right? Narrowing down to the particle level. Here comes the nitpicks. 
Why does every escapist stuff we watch in this bitter world need to have a bittersweet ending? Oh, well, I, <laughs> I was down for it. Why is romance villicized? Oh, there you go, Alicia. Uh, mm-hmm. Why is self-sacrifice put on such a high pedestal at the expense of community? Connection, the stronger tr- together trope. Why isn't there any announcement of another season, a movie, a spinoff <laughs> of some underutilized yet full of potential characters? Thoughts on this comment? I mean, I've, I, I think I've said I want to see. <laughs> I also want to see more. I think this is not the end. Yeah. I think it's a pause. Yeah, right. that's not the end. Okay. But any of these even guys. though, even though Tom Hiddleston said on the Tonight Show that uh, he called it the conclusion of a journey, but I think it is a conclusion of yeah, a journey, it is. and yeah, continuing but- it doesn't doesn't negate the finality of this moment. Right. There will be a new journey. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. That, that's that good Loki point. has to take. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Abby continues on Kang. No more for me. Thanks for <laughs> he never worked in either season. Sorry. If anything, he was overutilized and overacted. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, that's just how I feel not having read any of the comics about him. It was kind of funny, my inner darkness speaking, how Victor, who wasn't even the worst variant, got spaghettified over and over. The other thing we didn't really <laughs> mention, too, was the, ah, see you soon. <laughs> like they kept playing that. <laughs> That's true. Every time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> you hear that song clip. Condescending, lecturing, he who remains a solution, being denied was satisfying. Indeed. Mm-hmm. I need more Verity Willis just to give Wumi Masaku a chance to be more awesome as she can be. I think we all agree with that assessment, Abby. But it mm-hmm. seems like that name drop was pure aesthetics, nothing else. Would like another episode about what happened to Ravona in the void, maybe another OB and KC tending the world tree, not just there to pro- provide levity. So, yeah, Ravona, they definitely left the door open, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. She's like Alicia has been saying. These characters are not going anywhere. <laughs> and that <laughs> that pyramid in the Those background people. was clear, clear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't hide it. Put that in. Yeah. It wasn't an yeah. oopsie. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. All right. Uh, Abby continues. Sylvie better not even go into the feelings on the treatment she got this season. She's supposed to be happy now. Would it be interesting to know how she really got feels after this? Maybe she chooses something other than a minimum wage job and sad songs. Maybe she finds a girlfriend and shows the world that romance isn't dead. Anything is possible. Yes. <laughs> Go, Sylvie. I believe in romance. <laughs> <laughs> In conclusion, I will choose to go back on my wave of love and send this before I read anything more about the show online. One personal news, Loki himself, Tom Hiddleston, will be visiting my timeline in December. Nice. I book myself a meet and greet that will most likely last about a minute in total. Anyway, my heart will be full. Reference to Loki season one, episode three. So I guess he's going to be at some con or something that she's able to, yeah. to see him at. In Tokyo, yeah. Very cool. Thanks for all. Thank you all for being my weekly companions on this Loki ride. Thank you, Abby, for riding with us. Thank you, Alicia, for disagreeing me on some points and making me see them in a different light. Oh, there you go. We need our friends to brace each other to help brace each other up, right? Uh, To test our own opinions. Yep. I will be sure to tune into your various projects as it seems we do watch and like some of the same content. Wishing us all a great time watching, reading, and dissecting these. For all time, always, Abby. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Abby. Uh, it's great to have you along for the ride, and uh, great that you and Alicia are working on some fun stuff. So I think we're uh, ready to wrap up here um, and shift into some programming notes. Alicia, Beacon 23, at the time that we're recording this, has... Hit the interwaves, right? The interwaves. Yeah, the first two episodes have dropped. I've watched the first 10 minutes of the first one. Right. Uh, so far, <laughs> so far, so good. Okay. <laughs> Can't say much yet. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, but yeah, we're going to be, Luke and I put out the preview episodes. Uh, so you can find that on the Wolf Shift Dust timeline. And we're going to be uh, recording very shortly the first two episodes breakdown and putting that out as well. And uh, we're going to be, I think the next episode will hopefully be uh, the Dune book breakdown. Okay, very cool. 
Over on uh, Properly Howard Movie Reviews, Steve and Anthony have finished up their season, so they're on a little break, and we'll let you know when we've got new stuff. But if you want to go back and check any of their coverage, absolutely do that. In the meantime, we have our Severance feed running. We're expecting Severance Season 2 to kick back in sometime in early 2023. We don't have a firm date yet, but we're hopeful. So we went ahead and fired up the feed, and uh, Steve and Anthony have already recorded a season one recap, episode by episode. So those episodes are dropping weekly on Fridays. Once we get season two started, John and I are going to join Steve and Anthony, and the four of us are going to do full episode recaps going forward. For the Christmas, well, not Christmas, the holiday season and and into Thanksgiving, we're going to be doing a bunch of different one shots. There's no big shows right now. So we're going to catch up on our Silmarillion stories, our Star Wars Film Festival. The next film up on that is going to be Solo. Uh, We're also going to be doing a a, uh, special in December with Steve and Anthony, Anthony. We're all going to watch the Star Wars 19, was it 78 or 77 holiday special? The really, really terrible one. Life Day is coming up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a good copy of that. We're going to watch that and that should be out in December. Otherwise, I think uh, Jean and Alicia, you guys keep talking about uh, expanded universe coverage, some DC related things. So there will be. There will be. <laughs> there will be. See what happens. Yeah. Well, there will be. And we're going to, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think there's a lot of good stuff um, potentially coming out of the pipe. James from Cross. Comic, James comic Gunn. Geeks yeah. will be satisfied. Very yeah. good. Very good. Uh, regarding our patron, uh, Patreon, we have one. Uh, it's the best way to support us if you're interested at all in in contributing to what we do and making sure that we've got all the tools that we need to you know keep things running we've got three levels we have a three dollar a five and a ten dollar level and we do annual memberships we've got a bunch of exclusive benefits but for our top tier lore master patrons we always like to give them a shout out and they are samartian cyrus mark h Michael G, Michelle E, David W, Brian P, Nick W, SC, Peter OH, Bettina W, Adam S, Nancy M, Lavinia T, Doof 71, Brian 8063, Frederick H, Sarah L, Gareth C, Eric F, Matthew M, Sarah M, DJ Miwa, Andra B, Kwang Yu, Laura G, Deadeye Jedi Bob, Nathan T, Alex V, Aaron T, Sub Zero, Newest lore master, Aaron K, who I believe wrote in earlier on the feedback. Right. And last but not least, who will always forever be last, <laughs> is Adrian, who specially requested to be listed last. This one's for you, Adrian. Thank you so much for your support. Thank, thank, you, thank you to everyone you, for your you, support. Thank you. thank you to all our patrons. And if Patreon doesn't work for you, not a worry. You know, we're happy that you're just giving us a listen and enjoying the content. Remember to write in mcu at thelorehounds.com or visit us on the Discord to uh, have conversations with us there. Look forward to our Marvel coverage, which should be out in about a week. Jean, Alicia, it's been, it's only six episodes. episodes. I know, but it was a journey. It's been a ride. It's been a ride. (laughs) And we landed the plane. So thank you. The plane has landed. It was a plain journey. <laughs> uh, at least an a, a extra special thank you for all the work yes. that you did with the yes. outlines, uh, keeping us organized and pointed. It's really great. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a fun ride. So thanks everyone for, for joining us. And we'll see Take you care. in the next one. For all time, always. The Lorehounds Podcast is produced and published by The Lorehounds. You can send questions and feedback and voicemails at thelorehounds.com slash contact. Get early and ad-free access to all Lorehounds podcasts at patreon.com slash the Lorehounds. Any opinions stated are ours personally and do not reflect the opinion of or belong to any employers or other entities. 